everybody let me talk in this video and next upcoming videos about sorting algorithm you have to know more than 27 percent of the operation that happen in the computer process is sorting operation because mostly most of the work that we needed we need to sort the data to work with it if you remember one algorithm that we use it is that uh, binary searching when you search in data you need the data to be sorted and many and many operations so you have to select the algorithm that or the uh, exact algorithm that will match your work for sorting so i will discuss in this section number of sorting algorithm first i will start with bubble sort so what is bubble sort and how bubble sort work so if you think you have this array and this array have this elements in this way and the element for example let's you suppose this element of the array is not sorted like uh, just the element put it randomly in every in every location you add specific element so and think about it like how this add operation will work in this element so i would say okay i would have here an event and i have here and i have more and more and more and more and more elements here and here whatever here and here yes and let we suppose we have like numbers and uh, without any a specific sorting way you say okay i have one seven four then you have two three eight five and I ask you to do sorting for this element so how you do the sorting for this element to do the sorting first of all with the bubble sort first of all you say take first element and you compare to the next element if the second first element is greater than the second element you do swap if not you would move next like we say okay here is i don't have a problem so i will move second with third if it's greater than it yes it's greater than it so i need to do swap so i have to put four here and i have put seven there and i just remove this thing now i'm okay i need to go to next and do between seven and Two. Is they is it greater than it? Yes, I need to do swap. So add seven here, add two here, and remove this seven and this two. Now next, so hopefully everything is good, but I don't know. I just removed it by mistake. I removed this line. So don't worry about it. So let me just add it this way and continue. So you say and seven and two. So now which two element I have it? I would compare seven and three. Is it greater than it? Yes, it's greater than it. So I need to do swap. I need to add a seven here and a three here. And remove this seven, this a three. Here we go. Then compare second two element. Seven with eight, is it greater than it? No, so they are okay. So I would go to the next and compare uh, eight with five is it greater than it yes so i have to add eight here and add five here and just remove the origin eight origin five and i'm okay now you say okay this section is done so now i have here large element so i will not do sort i will continue same process with this section only so i will start from the beginning like is one greater than four no so i don't have problem let me go next is four greater than two yes four greater than two i would replace four by two then just remove this four remove this two i'm okay now second is it three four greater than three yes so add four here add three here and remove this four this is three now let you go next four and seven is it greater than it no so i don't have any problem so i would go and compare next i would say seven greater than five yes so add seven here add five here and remove seven remove five this way now you say okay this section is clear so i no longer need to add do any operation so i need to move this line so now seven and eight they are clear so I, you need to you don't need to do any changing in that element now you continue the same process with this section now okay is it three 
uh, one greater than three no so i keep it is two greater than three uh, no keep it is it three greater than four no keep it is four greater than five no keep it so now you just move the line here you say okay all that element is sorted so i don't have any problem while this i will continue same process with this section only again is one greater than four no one greater than two no is two greater than three no is three greater than four no so i say okay all this section are sorted so i no longer need so that's mean all this element is sorted and i would repeat same process only on this section is one greater than two no is two greater than three no so that's mean all this section is sorted so remove this line this two line and you say okay all this element is sorted is one greater than three no so they are, they are sorted so i'm done so if you see now the array is sorted one two three four five seven eight this is basically sorting algorithm but how much time or oh, do you how much could complexity you could you you would think this will take so will take the complexity of this algorithm is o of n square which is too much because to do this process you need two for loop one for loop is going between every element and compared to the other and the second one control this process so that's mean you have two for and you will see it in the implementation so this n and this n that's mean n square i would say wait a minute and wait for the and avoid use this algorithm when you work with it in the code because you will see another algorithm is more easy than it there is more more algorithm for the sorting so let's go next and discuss another algorithm i think it is also bad if you if you want to do sorting thank you for watching and see you next hey everybody let me start talking about sorting algorithm i will start with bubble source so to get started i just create a new package let me say i create a package i will name it com dot sort okay because i need to add everything about sort inside it so now i get a new package then class i name it bubble sort okay or bubble sorting because i need to give function name create main here you go so what do you think in the bubble sort and bubble sort you say okay i have faction and this faction should be static because inside the class have to be static if you want to card from here so you say static does it return anything void bubble sort and oh i didn't write it well so bubble sort and this bubble sort will take element array so array or an array of integer arr okay that's cool so this is my array and i want to do bubble sort for so how i do sort bubble sort first of all let me take the length of the array i will say ar dot length because first of all to get started with array you need to get the length of the array then second thing let me define temporary variable equal zero this is just basically variable i want i will use it to any swap elements so how would you think about sorting so sorting in bubble you just use uh, n squared that's mean you have two for loop so you say okay for integer i equal zero i less than n then you say hey i a plus plus this is basically for first loop the second loop you say for integer uh, j equal one then you say j less than n minus i because you, you don't want to take less element in every swap operation then you say i plus or j plus plus okay then uh yeah this is basically how how the process for swap operation work then you say okay if the array for j minus one equal or greater than array for j so that means the previous element greater than this element hey do swap between them so how do i do swap so okay start open a bracket and you say okay you take this element array for j you add it in the term the term variable that you define it then you say this element equal array for j then now next process array for j should be should add the temp inside it and this is basically how the uh, process works so why it's in square you know why it's in square so if i just how many this time will take let's take n and this one take n this loop so this take constant time 
So n by n, n square. So for that reason, bubble sort take n square to get sorted. So this will get sort all your element inside the array. So this is bubble sort. Let me just minimize it. So well, the element I want to sort, first of all, let me suppose here in main method, I define integer array, whatever. I just initialize the data for it. I give it 10 uh, or 1, 15, 13, 10, 16 then 18 okay i just want to sort this element then okay what do you think you say okay let me print them before the sort okay so i s uh print element you say uh, before sort i would i think there is easy way to print s y s you say but just you say a r r dot to array to string hopefully this will work no, not work to string. Pop, pop, pop. I thought I thought it should be work, but I think there is another way to print all the element of the array directory. But I don't remember to watch one to array. Hmm. Hopefully, I don't know. I don't know really. I just I just I just don't remember. So I would I would print it by i. That's mean I would do is for loop. Say for integer i equal zero i less than arr dot lin then you say i plus plus i just print them using loop then print them print print line if you don't like print line you say okay print then you say okay add slash t if you don't if you want so it'll be better so this is how the element being 1 15 13 whatever now let's call bubble sort you say okay let we do bubble sort for the array then here you go I'm sorting now the item is sorted. Let me just copy these three lines and add them here and say after sort. So after I send them to the sort array, array bubble sort sorted, then after sort should I get same element? After sort C1, 10, 13, 15, 16. Yeah, here you need to do slash in to just make your code more clear. Yes, before sort this is, after sort this is. Here we done. Uh, thank you for watching. Body. Let me talk in this video about another sorting algorithm, name it selection. So how selection would work? I suppose I have 1, 8, 5, 3, 10, 6, 15. So how this algorithm would work? The algorithm is really easy to work. You say, okay, I have this location. I'm in number one. So I just call, I would just look for like the minimum number in the array in next elements is the one is this minimum is this less than one no is this one less than one no is this one less than one no is this less than one no is this one less than one no is this one less than one no so keep one in place and go for the next element that's mean this is already sorted so now you take eight so is this one is this one less than five eight yes i have five now so now the element, less element is five. Is that uh, three less than five? Yes, so now I replace it three by five. Three is less one, less than, less element. So now just go next, is 10 less than three? No, is six less than three? No, is 15 less than three? No. So the less than one element is three, so you would replace three by eight. You say, okay, let me take three and eight. I will say I add a three here and add eight here and here you go you just take this and you would continue same process for the next element you have five is the eight less than five no is this one less than five no is it less than the five no is this one less than five no so yes like we will keep five in its place there is no change now let me take talk eight is this one less than it yes so now there is element is ten is six less than ten yes so now the next Less than less element is six, so you just not eight, not ten. It's Fifteen, you say no. Okay, let me just return the line. I don't know why I always remove it, but okay. Or you could say okay in this way. Okay. Sometimes the problems happen. So now I have the less element is six, so I would replace six by eight and eight by six. Say okay, let me remove this one and this one. So you would say six, eight. Now they are ordered. Just remove this one and let me talk about 10. So say 10, 
Is 8 less than 10? Yes. So now I have 8 less than element. Is 15 less than 10? No. Less than 8? No. So I would replace 8 by 10. So I would take 8 and 10 and say 8 and 10. There's yeah, so no process. Everything is cool. Now I'm with 10. It's now I have 10. So if you say, if you think this is 10, is that 15 less than 10? No. So I will keep 10 in place. And 15 I will not compare because already it will be larger one. So now if you see how much uh, is they ordered, yes, you have one. Then you have five, three, five, six, eight, ten, fifteen. The data is ordered. But how much the code complexity here? Also n square because if you see it, you need two for loop. One for loop is going through element, one, then two, then three, then four. The second one is, is getting the minimum between uh, the, the remaining list so you want to have to use two for n by n is n squared so this one is also is not good algorithm for sorting data but i just want to show you this two algorithm and i'll show you the implementation for the algorithm because you will use i'm sure you use it a lot in your code so try to avoid them next when you work with uh, sorting there's another algorithm we have we discuss it, uh, insertion selection and we discuss it insertion sorry not insertion we discussed bubble there's another algorithm is named insertion also this algorithm also take n square the time complexity is n square so also i try to avoid using this one i will not discuss it because same thing this, this complexity is same but for space complexity all this algorithm take off one because they use same array but for time complexity they take times square or n square okay so yes this is what i want to share you so let me go and talk about best algorithm in searching hey everybody let's talk in this video how we could do implement for selection sort so to do implement our selection sort i will get a new class i will name it selection i will say sorting so because i need to do selection sort method in the code so main method implemented here you go so to implement selection sort let me define static selection okay sort the selection sort take integer for array okay here you go now i want to do selection sort how you would think the selection sort static void or should not return anything so how you think uh, the selection sort should work so first of all you have to for loop integer i equal zero then you say i less than array dot length dot length then i plus plus because hey i need i just have element i need to go le less than that element then i continue make sure i start from zero and i continue less than last element yes it's better to say last less than one because you don't want to go through the last element when you start when you do selection because it's already sorted the last element so you don't need to work with it so let's uh, minus one will be better so now i restarted so what do you think i need i need first of all i need to get the index the element that i need to swap with so let me suppose the index equal i as initial value then i would look for the another one i say j equal uh, i plus one because I, I would search from the next element i will not search with my element then j less than array dot length because i need to go next then i say j plus plus okay not j minus minus j plus plus here you go so yes here is it so now i say if array for j greater than or less than array for index please take the index and replace it so if you say okay index index should be equal j so uh, what i mean by that i first of all i just define integer uh, j j equal i plus one then j for the less than the element then whenever i find it, i replace it so what this process mean mean hey if you want to draw it you say okay i have this list of element i would start from first element as he say here, zero i would compare it with the next one i would not compare it with the first one because if you see 
I plus one so I will not compare it with itself so I will continue compared with anyone whenever I find any man less than it I take the index I replace it with it so I have the index finally if there is any element here greater than my element the index should be changed index should not be equal I so now I'm checking if index is not equal I that's mean hey there is something happen so I would say here I would say here I just go down I would say if the index it's not equal I that's mean something happened because I already said here they are equal if there is some change happen that's mean they are not equal so what I would say I would say integer temp okay a call array for index then you say uh, array for index a call for array for I then you say array for I a call temp here you go yeah this is basically hopefully Tim write it correctly here you go so now this is sorting algorithm and hopefully it work fine without any problem and this is what I want to share with you in this point so let me think about how we call this method did you remember in bubble sort how we called in the main method we just great main and this all this stuff let me just copy this code from bubble sort bubble sort this is bubble sort and go to selection and replace main with this main so what the, i have this main i just define array before sorting a printed then call bubble sort now i'm calling selection sort so make sure you call selection sort okay make sure you call them this way and you say hey then you print them after you select it and here you go now let me click hopefully sorted yes if you see now the array is get sorted using selection again selection is still give you n square because here you have n and here you have n and n by n is n square for that reason sel selection sort is not good also how are we done and thank you for watching let me talk in this video about one of most interesting searching searching algorithm name it a quick sort so from its name a quick sort more of research proved that this algorithm give you a result faster from any other algorithm but still this algorithm is worse and use a comp time complexity only not space complexity so yes if you think i have this array i am ask you to hey find me uh, or sorted using quick sort for quick sort first of first thing you have to do you have to find the pivot there are different way of find pivot some of them finding as a first element some of them last and some of them would consider the middle is the pivot element for it okay so first I select pivot when I select pivot now I have two array one array of, of the left and one array of the right so now the pivot is a four so I what I will do I say okay come from this side and see if you have element a greater than pivot stop so is six greater than pivot yes so stop then I go from this side if you have element less than pivot stop so he will move his hand this way is one less than pivot yes so stop when he stop here on here so he will do swap between this one and this one so I take one and six say okay add one here add six here and he will continue same process now he did the first element now he go to the next location is this one greater than pivot yes so stop he will move is this one greater than pivot or less than pivot no so I move next is this one less than pivot yes so now yes I would replace this one with this one so if you see he just ignored this one because it is greater so there is no problem so I just see do swap between what between 8 and 3 so take 3 added here and take 8 added here and you are good to go to the next so now that side is sorted this side is okay so now do you know what he will do now after he just divided now he will do same process for the section and same process for this section that's mean this section he will take the pivot he will sort the element he say okay this one less yes I need to replace one by three so add add one here add uh, okay one two three so it's already sorted so you have one it's, it will be one two three finally and this one he will continue some process eight have here so you replace eight by six you say okay take six and take eight 
and take six in this way six eight up you have six here and eight here and he continue with same process if you see now i just get it sorted i think one two three four six eight eight but the idea that you have to understand it with with a quick sort you first select pivot then you have two array that right yes now you have three element here and three element here and i always select the pivot here and the pivot here and you continue selecting pivot so the idea here you say okay i have now one new one by cam two then two before you say this one take login but you are not right here because quick sort is not always supposed that the element that you selected as the pivot is the middle element is a like middle element in the value i mean by that imagine this one will be 10. is there any sorting will happen no i know it's be a little bit complex for you let me give it to you in the easy way now if i suppose i have it in this way okay and i decide this one a pivot and this middle so i need to move here and move here imagine this one is the large one so there is no no split will happen so a second try it is still same and third try still same but you're still sorting but the the array is not divided as as you think because the value still is, you select is the larger one or the less one if the array is sorted so this process will take n time for n elements for n by n so a quick sort will be n square take as as time for space it will take log n this is better than other algorithm for spacing but as i told you the problem that happened with sorting for quick sort is in some cases not all cases the value that is selected maybe the array already sorted so the value is a larger one so you will not you will not see next try as two array still same one 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 still continue one and you arrange them one and arrange them because the value that is selected is the larger one maybe it's happened if you have like here in this way in this way have you have this element for example and you have one eight two ten and ten is the larger one so now when you try to do next process still the ten is the large one so you did not divide it. imagine this process continue next 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 and your array will never go to the next two and select pivot still your array in other step continue and this is on the worst case scenario still in the two still in the one so this is the problem with the quick sort so yes are we done and thank you for watching Hey everybody, let me try to do implement for quick sort algorithm in this video. So to get started, I will just create a new class. I will name it quick sorting. So here you go. I will say quick sorting. Okay. Make sure to create main method if you want. If you don't want, don't create it. Okay. I will create it because I need it. So yes, here we go. And I have here one I want to work so to get it started i would just define my method i say start i name it static void doesn't do anything i would name it to quick sort okay and this method will take the array integer array and take two things take integer low and integer high because i need the high index and low index to the in the array to get the pivot so here you go i have high and low so let me start one by one so first of all to when i when when i should stop if there is any problem happen i would say if the low be greater than high that's mean hey you out of range you, you did a lot of work and you done so if this point happen that's mean no longer search i, I should return so i just stop the work it because re turn hopefully yeah so that's mean you pass the index that's mean you have search space and you went outside the search space now let you think about the middle so how you find the mid mid should be same thing will be low plus same thing in the binary high minus low over two this is how the rule for the finding mid element in the and the all right according to this one i would define the pivot so pivot should be say should be come from array format because the pivot is the middle element so yes so now you say okay i have this draw i have this array for example i select this one to be a pivot 
So now let we start to think about how we saw this side and how we saw this side to make anyone here greater than pivot and anyone here less than pivot. So how I do that? I just go here and say, okay, you done this. Let me suppose an integer i equal the low element and integer j equal the high element. Okay. Now I say while, okay, i raised than or equal j that's mean i'm in the size so the size doesn't pass that that means that i didn't get greater than high same that same as this point so continue so what i need from this one it's hey any uh, move here until you find any element greater than the pivot and move here until you will find any element less than pivot to make a swatch between this one switch between this one and this one so i will say okay while all right for i less than a pivot if it's less than pivot i don't have any problem i plus plus continue then same thing you would do for the for the for the second one for the someone greater than pivot you say while all right for j if it's greater than pivot so also i don't have any problem for j so j have to get minus because yeah continue here and continue continue from the side view there is nothing less than and continue from the side if there is nothing greater than when you when you uh, find anything greater than or less than stop because you see this is the condition so when he stop i need to do swap between this element how i do swap i, I came here i say hey if i greater than or equal j then make this a process take integer temp equal ri for i and uh, ri for i add ri for j then you say ri for j equal temp i just doing swap make sure if i just if i just have this ri and i have the pivot here I have this element and this element get swap between them so now i need to move the pointer here and this pointer here the pointer i mean ij so i would say i plus 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 so move it move i here so i just move it i here and j also i need to reduce it one so i say it should be j minus one here you go so this is the basically how the process goes in some way now i just get order only this one and this one now i need to go through this part and do same thing pivot and i go through this part and do same thing for pivot and continue do backtracking so how i do that i say yes i just done from this loop this for while loop hopefully this while loop i just get it hopefully this one yeah here you go this is the while loop so i done from the while loop let me say okay i say if low less than j that's mean do backtracking that's mean take left side say quick sort the method name send it the array and send it the low with instead high send j that's mean hey i have this array now i get pivot i sort this side and i sort the side now i want to send only this side as backtracking to get sorted so i take low with j okay same thing I would do for the high. Say, okay, if uh, high greater than i, so same thing. Say a quick sort. I will send array. I would say i with high. Okay, so I would send the remain part. I would send, okay, this is the pivot. Now take this part, all those two reserve, uh, or do backtracking bag with it and continue. This is basically how a quick sort works. Then when you're done, you sort it. So now I have this quick sort algorithm and I think it's good. So now I need to send data to this quick sort to start searching. I already have bubble sort and I have main method for bubble sort. I would copy it because I would use it in other places. So this is main. I just copy the main only. Go to quick sort. I don't need to repeat the code. Remove the main here and replace it with this main. And this quick sort, if you remember, I just define array printed array before sorting then call bubble sort now i will not call bubble sort i will call quick sort okay so call quick sort sending array and sending low index should be zero and what the high index should be array dot length minus one last element in the array and here you go after sorting it will give you printed for you so here you go 
see after so 1 10 13 15 16 18 again still quick sort give you an square for sorting because if you see there's many backtracking happen not many backtracking as we said in worst case scenario all the element the the array doesn't get split still the array continue element is still less than the pivot so you will not this is the worst case scenario but many research find that a quick sort give you a result faster so yes here we done and thank you for watching everybody let me talk in this video about one of most interesting sorting algorithm name it merge sort merge sort using concept name it a divide and conicure like in this way divide and con cure so what does that mean so if we think about merge sort let me think about we have it array with eight elements so i would say okay i have array let me just clean everything so so i have larger space to work with let's say okay i have array with eight elements mm -hmm. this way and there you go i have eight elements for it okay i would divide it to eight elements so let me suppose i have it here one two three four five six seven eight hopefully eight elements now with the number i have it let's suppose i have one eight seven four three two five nine when you talk about divide and decue that's mean okay you take the array and divide it from the middle so first thing you just divide it from here you have four elements in this side and four elements in this side so now that's mean we have two array every array have four elements so let me divide in this way i will say okay i will divide it in this way i will say okay i have four not this one not this line hope i have four elements here and i have other four element here just mean do it in this way to make everything clear say okay one two three four and this one have one two three four and you move the elements you have one eight seven four and here you have a three two five nine now again everyone will divide it in two array so this one two and this one two that's mean i have now four array so two element two element two element two element and here you go two 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 and two and suppose So I have five nine here. Uh, let me remove this line five nine, and I have a three two. I have four seven. I have one eight. Now again, this should be divided in one one one. So now finally I have eight element one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have nine five three two seven four one eight this what we mean by divide and decue so that's mean you just uh, you have bigger problem if you see it i have bigger problem with eight i just divide it to smaller problem and you try to solve this smaller problem so now you have one and eight you just solve this one how you just take this two element and solve them you say one eight then you take this two elements, seven, four, you solve them, you will add seven, then four, say, or oh, sorry, four and seven. Then you sort this two, you say, okay, two and three. Then you take this two problem, five and eight. So instead of having eight elements, you just now have two, two, every small, small problem. Now you would merge it to four and four problem, one, two, three, four, and this one will be merged to four problem. Is that right? Yes. So now I have one eight, so you take add one, then four, then seven, then eight. You just merge and sort, merge and sort. Now we have here two, then three, then five, then nine. 
Now finally you have bigger, right? With eight elements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have now you say, okay, it was the large less one is one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then seven, hopefully, then nine. So I don't have eight element. I have four. Hopefully, I just I just did, did correct. One one I just take one then two. Oh, I think I did mistake. One two three four five six seven. Okay, let me just. This is last step was not correct. So let me just remove it and use pen to make it clear for you. You see, okay, I have eight element. One two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here you got it. I would use different colors for that for moving elements, so it will be easy to follow. Which the last one is the one you add one, so now one is done. So was the second last one is two, so you just take two and add it here. Was the third next one you have four. I think uh, here I have one, two, seven, this one, eight, not four. So this is what makes a mistake. Because this is eight, not four. So yes. So now I have two. Then what the third sec less element is three, then four, then five, then seven, then eight, then nine. If you see, how they how we sort the element we just first uh, we have bigger problem we change it to small smaller problems then we try to solve it solve it as a smaller problem smaller problem solve a smaller problem then go up this is what mean divide and conic your conic divide and cure concept mean you take a bigger problem divide it in smaller problem you solve you solve every small problem alone then you merge the content to get the final data so how much the complexity would be for this code to be executed? So did you see what we have here? You have eight problem. Then it be four, then it be two, then it be one. Is that right? If you see it, it's get something get to middle. That means this take log n time to get executed. But how many elements you have? We have n element because we need to do sorting other stuff. So let's say n log n. So the big O for this algorithm will be n log n. That means we have log n because we divide in a smaller problem, and this operation to have to be to be done in n times. So I would say, okay, this code will take n log n. This for time. For space complexity, this would take O of n. Why of n? Because you need to use temporary array. That's what we said in the implement next to store the data and merge the component. Here we done and thank you for watching and see you next. Hey everybody, let's talk in this video how we could do implement for merge sort algorithm in Java. So to get started I will create a new class and I will name it merge sort. Here you go. So what do you think first two things you need to define? When we talk about merge sort, if I just use the draw tool, what do you think what do you think we need to now? So in the draw, you need if you say if you think this is the array, you need to do merge sort. First thing you need to divide it to small problem. So you need to have element by element. Then you need to merge this element. To merge this element, you need to use temporary array or array to to merge this element. So first I think I would define uh, array that I would use it to save my element that my i mean the origin element that i would use it this is origin element and temporary array i would use it to save to combine the element after sort them cool this is first point second point what do you think i would need to have i need to prepare this yeah before doing main method i need to do prepare for this to uh, do element that's mean hey when someone send you uh and then this name is prepare when anyone anyone send array need to get sorted i just take this array and assign it to this one that i have it and also the temporary i define my temporary 
array size equal the size that for array of what he needed because that's what happened when I do merge I need to have same size then I say do merge do merge thought what do this do merge sort method do just getting the method or the getting array for example four and separate it to four small problem so how I do that I would take this code I would use uh, prepared code so just to save my time and make the operation easy for you so think about it this merge sort what I send, if you if you see, merge sort, I just send it lower index and I index. That's mean I, I send it this one and I send it last element in the array. So when I send it, hey, he will take this element. If the low is still less than uh, high, I just take middle because that's what happens when you do merge sort. First of all, you separate two problems. So you take the middle element. Then you take this side and still continue separated and this side and separated and continue this one and separated so that's what will happen for you this take left side right side left side right side and continue by final from this problem for example for one you would have finally four small problem now you need to merge this four two by two two by two then four by four this would do for you merge part so merge part what this process for merge part because merge part take a lot of coding so i just prefer to prepare it also to show you how it's work this merge part so yeah uh, i just have this here this one and uh, here you go i just merge part so what happened merge part do for you it really is a process if you just go here you say okay Mer uh, here before that you send the lower index and high index and medium that's mean well, let me show you the process think about it in this way you have this one you have the middle okay for example you have first two element you have first three elements you need to merge them so you have low you have high and you have middle you send three parameter this is three parameter to merge sort to do merge for this three element so how marriage will work for you so he take them and he first of all take this element and add them to a temporary array that's mean he take the first three elements for example and move them to temporary array as a three so take them here and move them here you go then second the process he take lower index and high index for this one and this one so what he mean by this process he mean okay i have this array for example okay and i want to do merge between this for example four element okay let me suppose or three or whatever i have first element and have i take after the middle one okay i compare which one is less this one or this one if this one is less i will take it add it in my origin array then if this one then i compare the second one with one if this one who won this this one or this one maybe this one less i take this one add it so this is the process for doing this op this operation okay he take that he, co he take them before the middle until the end and he try to do this process if it's less move it to the new array and increase it if no just do opposite operation then continue will continue do this process until he done but in same way some way maybe they are still in both sides less and both are equal so he just move the remain element so basically this method what this method do and you will see it in the github if you want to follow it step by step or to copy it i just could stop the video and follow it so it basically again if you have this four element send it so how many elements i have one two three four was the low i have the high and i have the middle so here you define the low and high and middle you have it here now here uh, you just take all these elements and move them to temporary array just mean just four elements you move them to a temporary array all these elements you move them to a temporary array now you have it now okay you have you take the low index and high index and middle that's mean this one will be low this one will be high and this one will be medium plus one that's mean this one the medium plus one now i want to sort them if you want to sort four elements how you would sort them if you have this four element you want to sort them how you would sort them you have the low and you have the high after the medium you just compare which one is a great or which one is less maybe this one less you just you have this is the origin array you take this one add it here now the pointer move here you compare now this is done compare this one and this one which one less maybe this one less you just take it add it next then you compare this one and this one which one is less and you continue your process merging this thing and this is how merge sort works
here you go now everything is cool now let me do the sort so i would prefer to use method i already made method i already write the code for it so just take it here and paste it here this main method just define array print array before sort then call merge sort to prepare then do the sort for you if i just run it here you go if you see the element is just sorted here we done and thank you for watching and the code will be available on github Everybody. Let me talk in this video about one of most interesting sorting algorithm, name it heap sort. Until now, I think this algorithm is the best algorithm for sorting to in two plays for the space complexity and time complexity. So let we think how heap sort. Heap sort work with a tree. So if you think you have this tree, you have this node and this node. Uh, this node when you have node connected to other node overline this name the tree and we'll go in details about tree so i have here is one here is four here is six and here is two five eight i want you to represent it in the heap way heap say okay every parent have two child and the child in the left will be equal Two will be located in 2k and in the right will be located in 2k plus 1 k the index of the parent so what I mean by that I will make it clear for you in a moment so if I suppose I have this array okay so the parent will be first element in the array so on the index zero so i would suppose what the, which the parent i have it here i have one is the parent so parent is the will be in the index zero so where, where that child for the for this parent will be located okay the parent for this child will be located in the 2k and 2k plus one but you cannot use zero as indexing you you, you start from one in the as indexing you say okay i will start from one so the parent who the child who located on the left will be located in location 2k so 2 multiplied by k k this one is k by 1 that means 2 that means second location will be for the left kid that means this one so this one will be located here what about right kid i mean this one where is located by 2k plus 1 what's the k i have for the parent 1 that means 2 by 1 plus 1 is a 3 that means location 3 you will have this kid like 6 see let me continue with other kids with the other parent so let me move to the next which parent you have it now we have 4 so 4 if you see it 4 here have 2 kids left and right so let me start from the kids in the left this one so left will be 2k what the parent index is 2 so 2 by 2 will be 4 so that means in location 4 you will have 8 what the kids in the right is 2k plus 1 what the k for it is 2 by 2 plus 1 that's me location 5 so this one 4 this one 5 4 5 you will have this one the right kids it is 5 so 5 located in location 5 now let me we move next for the next one that's mean we are talking now about six so if you say okay this is six this is six yes six have only left kids so i would say this one 2k well the six index is a three so two by three equals six so on location six in the array you will have two located if you see it here is it so did you see how I represent the tree using array? It's really easy. Every node have two kids, have right, left and right. The left kids will locate it in location 2x and the right kid will location 2x plus, 2k plus 1. This is the way of representing the data, but this is not the way that heap sort working. How heap sort working? Heap sort you first look through the largest element in the array. You say how you find it. Okay is the 5 greater than 4 yes so do replace between 5 and 4 so that's mean okay i will remove this 4 here 5 here and i add 5 here and 4 here now you did this part now you go to the same operation you compare this one 
with this node is 8 greater than 5 yes so do replace it moving it up so you say okay 8 here 5 here now you say okay now I'm done from this part so is the 8 greater than 1 yes so if yes do replace so take 8 move it here take 1 move it here 1 and 8 now you, you complete this section you say okay let me compare this part is uh, is that 2 let me hope I just removed this line by mistake so you just compare is 2 greater than 6 you just let in this point let just remove this line is this 2 greater than 6 no you don't so you don't need to do any change you just go here and compare 6 with 8 is 6 greater than 8 no so 8 is the greater than element now you have the 8 is greater than elements but you cannot remove it directly because if you remove it the tree will be corrupted so so you cannot do this process with the tree you have to to delete any element first i think you have to move it in this way you put it at the last element that's mean what i mean by that you just take six and eight you say okay i would add six here eight here then i just replaced again eight with two you say okay i would add two here and eight here so now it's really easy for you to remove this node so this node is going to the last element in the array that's mean eight okay then you continue say okay now i don't have this node let me continue same process we say okay i will compare one with four is one greater than four yes so do replace so take one take four should be four here one here now you have it yes so just go next four with five is five greater than four yes so do replace between them so take four five so bring five here four here you are good now so just remove this thing now you compare five with six is the five greater than six no so just keep six in its place so now now compare is five or six with two is six greater than two or two greater than six no so keep six in the place now okay i know six is the greater than element but now i have to move it here to delete it so i cannot delete it from this location so let me say okay do replacement in this side just move it at two here in this way at two and six so now i have six as the last element now i could hey it's time to remove you i don't need you so i just add it here in the end and remove it and continue same process until by end you will have then you then you, you will take off five then four then two then one if you see how it's sorted so now just let me think about how would be the big o for this tree so if you say this three you have one node then you have two then it's get double it that's mean this one take log n but this operation for moving element between this node, this node, and this node, name it heapify. Heapify. This heapify take log n. Okay? But if you see, we did not heapify one time. For finding every element, we would do heapify. How many elements we would have in this array? N element. So finally, O of the heap sort will be n log n. Log n for heapify and n for n element because we do heapify for n element to sort the array this is a basic example i could show you about heap sort let me go to the implementation and understand how we could implement it but finally before i go to the uh, implementation you cannot find sorting algorithm could bring you the code complexity less than n log n because this is the best sorting algorithm you cannot find less than it I also say this is best algorithm because not only time for space also this take O of one space in comparison with other sorting algorithm because here he did not use addition array he used same array and tried to sort the element inside array yes here we done and thank you for watching and see you next hey everybody let me talk in this video how we do implement for heap sort algorithm which is most interesting algorithm and you have to use it in all your sort operation so to get started i just create a new class i will name it heap sort here you go heap sort and i would not create anything just heap sort so what do you think i would have first thing I'd, you would have to have it i would define static 
uh, integer for total hopefully st uh, I just started wrong I don't know static integer for total okay this is total you would understand what total mean later on but this is you will see it now you don't don't worry then we say the most important operation we do it in the uh, heap sort is heapify so let me define the method for heapify so static why is static is wrong static uh, void doesn't return anything so name of this operation heap uh, phi okay hopefully yeah 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 if if i now if if I is correct now so what do you think this if if i would take it take away and then try to do sort until get the last element outside the array so i would def i would not define array i would define comparable because easy for me to follow the data so i would define comparable comparable uh, of of array i would not define normal array i define array that could compare their element so in this way comparable of array and i would take integer for i i mean the index of element that i want to swap it here you go so yeah next let me just implement this method so to implement this method i would say first of thing you have you need to get left and right so i say lft equal i multiply by 2 left node and integer l r g t will be for sure i multiply by 2 plus 1 this is next element so let me suppose integer grt should be the element i this just helped me to keep track if the element get replaced or not so i would replace it with the new one so if there is no change happen that means the element is still in the same place yeah so uh, how i do the comparable operation or uh, how we do how do i comparing two element then swap them so to do that first of all i say okay if l f t less than or equal total total you will see it later the total element that i have it and array for left uh, l f t uh, is if I compare it with compared to the object that array for GRT is this less than that's mean hey you need there's some change or greater than zero that's mean hey if this object that's the mean the element in the left greater than the father or the parent that's mean hey there is some process will happen that we suppose GRT equal the LFT that's mean hey if the you remember when you talked about the node you say okay if i have this node and this no, two node so he say hey if the node that's in the left greater than parent so hey you need to swap it okay get it cool so just i just give notifications that you need to swap it. i will do same process for the right i say okay if, if it's better for me to copy this line and just replace left by right i say if this is right still have to be less than total and if array for right let's compare with uh, our, 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 uh, if array for right compare with grt not this one if array for right compare with the grt greater than zero that's mean also grt will be a core left that's mean hey if there is also if i compare the one who are on the left so this one is tall if it's greater than so i need to do swap okay cool so now yes we do this process now uh, let me go next and say yes if the grt is not equal for i and i will go this process again this i'm sure you, you say okay why is it greater than should it be less than but wait a minute we will go back for it and show you with a different result so yes is not equal if this one is not equal this one that's mean if uh, this one is equal that's mean there is no change happen that's mean they are already balanced but but if any one of them is not balanced so this value should be changed so if there is no equal that's mean there is, uh, you, ha you have to do swap either with the left side or with the right side okay so to do swap you say okay first thing you, you need to do swap so you say swap between what between array for i and array for grt i will implement swap operation and then continue hipify call hipify hipify what you send send array and you send grt that means the new index so swap 
method need to be implemented so you say okay static void swap take two things take comparable and uh, comparable should be here as array also so also take integer for a and integer for b there's two elements to get swap them so i will how you would swap any two elements for sure you define comparable i don't know why he always give me this one you did comparable for temp equal array for a and you say array for a equal array for b then you say array for b equal temp just swap operation i didn't did anything magic just swap between two elements then here you go swap and continue swap and continue I swap and continue this is how hipify work is basically you have this three node for example if you find this node is greater than the parent so i need to swap it so yes you can do that grt that means if grt is not equal i so hey send i and grt swap them that means swap this one by this one then continue hipify from this point then he will start compare this one and this one and he continue and this is basically a hipify process so yes this is how you do hipify now let me go to the sort operation so now i understand how to hipify for one element but now i need to understand how we how i could do sort to process so to go down i would do sort so i say static void sort so when i sort i have to do sort i just get comparable again i don't know why comparable always i get it okay someone said me array and asked me to sort this array so i would say okay static sort comparable someone sent me array and asked me to sort it so how i would sort it first of all i just get total do you remember we define the total total means the total element that i have it so i say total equal array dot length minus one why because when you said okay i have this array and this element that i added in the end when when you when you just swap swap finally you get this element should be the short one or the less element now you need to move this event to the end and take this one to the first then you don't need to compare with this part so you need to take total minus one so that means you need to do hipify only on this part for that reason we use total so did you get it now that's cool so if i now i say for integer i equal total over two i do hipify from two over two then i greater than or equal zero then i minus minus greater than or equal zero my dot now why total this way so then i do hipify this mean when you just first time you take the array you need to do hipify for the array because array is not is not balanced to be hip to be hip array so so you need you need first thing before you start you just take them from the middle and you try to sort them you just take it from the end and try to sort this part this is before doing any heap operation now when you are done yeah now i'm i want to do now my tree is prepared to be hip hip tree so i say for integer i equal total still total then you say i greater than zero then you say i minus minus so yes now this is the the important process first of thing you already have the array sorted you already now have the first element in the array should be the shortest one so you need to move it to the end and you take the end here and you start to you start do hipify only on this part then you continue the same process take this one to the end this one here and do hipify only to this part and continue yes yeah, so how you do that so first of all you do swap between what between array in location uh, zero with array in location i because i is a total last element so then you say total minus minus because you will not need to go to that location again as i told you then you go to the next you do hipify 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 again hipify for the array with zero why with the zero because you need to hipify with the first element only in that array now everything is cool i have i have sort i have if i have everything now let me just implement the main method that uh, uh, that we will use it in this sort so if you go to bubble sort if you see here i have this is main method just copy same main method i just want to use same main method to don't lose my time here you go 
main method you define array you just print the array before sort first then you need to do sort so it's just call sort process you say sort hopefully the sort work now hopefully this sort no small small letter so you just calling sort method for array to do sorting then uh, yeah this is the sort comparable is array so you don't you do you need to define comparable array this integer cannot be compared if you define it as integer have to be integer because comparable type not work with a and t work with integer integer if you go to the integer class you would see there is comparable already implemented see so you could use it you see you could compare to compare to this element if you remember when you discuss about comparing but integer only doesn't have comparable so just compare send it then you print i would not print the array because now the sorted array will be i think no i print the array also yeah yes i'm okay sorry so now if i just click run here you go 1 10 13 15 16 18 this is basically how you sort the array but one thing you say hippify you told us when you talk in the lecture you say uh, i have three node if i just talk about it here in this way draw okay you said okay you said i have a three node if this one a greater than this one that means left side if this is greater than the origin you do swap that's okay this man is correct so you don't have any problem here but here why you did same condition this is because comparing operation when i compare object with next object i would have this a problem so it's better when you compare object this object use same concept so this is from java that structure i want to go through it so if you think about uh, say okay this one what you think about it as a normal process you say this one this one if sh this one is less so when element you have it in the right side be less than that element what the what the result should be should be minus one should, should be equal equal minus one that means be less is that right this is less operation so let me run it and see see he ordered for you but he ordered in discrete order that means he first thing take hip five for the last element first that means now if, if you follow the procedure that we do it in the in the keyboard when we talk about it uh, and when we write everything we was taking only first element we did you remember when you just draw the tree we just take less element move it here then move it here then you have this image and you take it out so always this element be last 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 element this is if you if you follow that process this is the correct process that we discussed in the in the book but and, and that uh, blackboard so but if you want to be order and, and increase order this is discrete order if you want an discrete order you would say greater than or equal zero and this is just as i told you this is just concept just use the one that say this one 110 this is an increase order that one was decrease order so yes follow anyone that you think is good if you want to order discrete do this process if you want increase increase do this if you want disagrees do that. Here we done and thank you for watching. Let me talk in this video about another interesting problem I personally saw in one of my job interview, which is check if two words are similar. The problem is like this: giving a different word such as loop, pool, polar. Find if the two words have same characters. For example, loop and pool they have same character they just order differently same thing about pola so the idea is i give you two words and tell me if these two words uh, have same characters or not there is multiple way to solve this problem let me go through the dynamic programming approach dynamic programming approach you just build two dimension array for example this array have four rows and four columns equivalent to number of rows and columns that you you have okay and for every row first word for example loop you put it here and pool for example you put it here okay and what you will do is just checking you say p do i see p here no 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 yes do i see o here no yes no uh, no do I see all here? No, 
yes but I already used it before I cannot use it again oh yes no L do I see it here yes no 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 so the idea is you say okay if I find one one at every row that is mean the two words are similar if not the two words are not similar so very basic simple if they are not similar if I just took this word and instead pull I say mm, pull T for example so T is not here so they are not similar so for two words to be similar you have to have at every row uh, number one at least one at least one at every row then these two words are similar but the complexity of this solution will be n square because you need two loops one goes through rows one goes through columns well let me think about a different way make it more simpler more simpler than the complexity of n square so we are this is the complexity curve if i think about it so i have of one here or log n n n n log n and n square so here i have n square i have here n log n i have here log n i have one or whatever of one okay so i want to make the problem like faster solve it in an easier way i want to go from n square to something less maybe n maybe n log n whatever so you know this this should this should be one and uh, this one should be log n and this one n that one n log n then n square so i want to see if i be able to make my solution here or in this area instead that one okay let me look at the problem in different way if i look through the problem a different way i have pool loop and i have pool they have same characters if i have, if i sort them for example i have loop if i sort it it will, it will stay loop but if i have a pool if i sorted it will be loop okay and these now equal just sorting when you sort something sort the character alphabetically so if I sort this one alphabetically, I will get two loop. If I sort this one alphabetically, it will get loop. So two characters, yeah, they are similar. So all what I need to do, just sort them, then see if they are similar. The sort will cost me n log n time using heap sort. So now I just move it from n square to n log n, which is faster. Again, the solution is I just get the word, sort them. After I sort them, I compare if they are equal or not. So, to do that encoding, I would just create a new file and I will name it mm -mm -mm. com. Okay, this is not package, this is just a new under package. So, it should be com.problem16. And here I say I create a new class and name it word similar okay and I'll have this method so I would assume my input would be two words so string for the okay so oh, okay just wait let me just say I have a word one should be a loop for example and I have a string for word two should be pool okay and i should have a method when i call it a similar i it return boolean for me and I check is similar okay i should take two words one of them string word one and string word two okay and to call this method from here i should say okay I am defining new instance and define boolean is similar to call a new instance from that class and I call dot 
is similar I just sending the two old one or two and the return from this one should be telling me is similar or not okay similar should tell me true or false okay that is so now to find the two words they are similar as I said I just need to sort both of them then check whatever I want but before that I need to define my word boolean is similar or called false by default they are not similar and I have two words now first I need to sort them so I say I say citring for the word one array I need to change it to array to be able to sort it using Java so I say word one word one dot two car array or this one is not citring this is car array now I could sort this one all what I need to do to sort this array I just say arrays arrays uh oh arrays dot sort in this way okay dot sort let me see if there is a myth I'm sure there is a method named sort here is it this is a sort method I'm just trying to sort the first array or first word then I sort the second word which is what I need to do just define word 2 should be sorting the second word and I have them sorted okay now what I need to do I say for loop integer i equals 0 i less than our word 1 word 1 array uh -oh. dot length i plus plus and i see if any character are not similar that's mean return false if word 1 array for i it's not a call or 2 array for i i should direct just return false okay and false and this method by the end should return a true so if just pass this loop it should return a true okay i'm not going to do this one more thing if the length of two words are different i should return them false so i say okay if the word one dot length come on dot length it's not equal to word two dot length i should return them false that's mean they are not they are already different length so they definitely should be false so the solution look like this it's similar you same two words first of all i check if their length are not same return on false it's definitely I don't need to do any check they are different lengths so they are not similar otherwise I just first sort so I just take the first word convert it to characters array then sort it take the second word convert it to character array sort it now I just check if all the characters similar check if all characters are similar okay so i0 is then i++ plus plus any by any chance any of the words are not equal i return them false break everything otherwise by the end i will return true so based on this pull on loops if i just run it i should get it true because they have same character i say put if i just change it now it should return to me false okay because they are not similar yeah we done thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and share for this video did we talk in this section about binary tree? Binary tree is another data structure. What we could use it to represent our data as a binary tree. When you talk about a tree, that means you represent your data as number of nodes and this node are connected, or number of edge and this edge are connected over vertex. So if you suppose I have a tree, so I would say, okay, in the binary tree you have a node and the node have no more than two child so either have two or one child or don't have any child so let's suppose this one have two child and another level this one also have two child 
and here we go this one have two child and this one have two and you could say yes this one also have two child and this one have one child and this one have one child you could have or the note could have two child or the note could have one child that's no problem so if i if i just add that inside it i would say okay i add one here two four six eight twelve fifteen zero two one one five two this is how we represented it or how you add the data and the binary tree on any tree you will only know the root node this will be in roots if you see the level you have first one then p double two then it be four then maybe it's get double or not it's the bin so how you represent this data in the node if i ask you hey represent this data as a node how you represent it i know it's been something complex for you but i will show you a quick thing you will understand it how to represent this data as a node you say okay what i have for the root for example you say okay i have a root node if you see every node is connected to two nodes that means every node have, have left pointer and right pointer and have the value what the value i have here i have one as a value for the left pointer is referred to the node and the right pointer is referred to another node okay so this one two value and this four so let's we go to the two section two also has two node one node and a second node one to the left one to the right to the left have value six and the right have value eight so also this one have left right and this one have left right let we start from this one this one have node and this one have node have the value of zero two and for left right then here two here have left right no more node this connect to ground or to the north this one connect to the north so this one same have two node and this one have in this way so i have one and one so one and one i have left right left right all these are connected to the now okay because there is no more node same thing for four four have left and right for the left have this node and for the right have another node for the left is 12 and 15 so this one 12 this one 15 this one have left right and this one have left right if we suppose this one on the left this one let we suppose this one on the left node and this one on the right so uh, this one on the right because if you see the, the node be in this way here is right here is left so here this one to the left to the right and that one to the left so this one on the right have this node okay this node have five and it connect to ground and in the right in the in the left doesn't have anything and this one have only on the left so if i suppose here i have two two is connected to the left and the right doesn't have anything because you see here doesn't have anything in the right so i just connect left right left and ground and ground so every node if you want to represent it by code you say okay if i just change the color say you have a class name it node and you have integer for value and node as a left and node as a right because this is what we discussed it we said hey every node three part value okay this is the value left this is the left right this is the right and this is how to represent it represent binary tree so just think about binary tree it says very simple tree this tree doesn't have more than one, more than two child in it and that is so basically this is the way how you think about the binary tree binary tree is a tree that have child and no more no more than two child in it but there is many different faces for the binary tree one of them is binary search tree bst okay binary search 
tree. So what does the tree mean now and how we could work with it? Binary search tree is same of binary tree, but the data is sorted in this tree. So if you suppose I have this tree, have root, the root have two kids or two child, and this child had two, and this one have two. I want to be simple. Okay, when we say this is binary search tree, here we go. When we talk about binary search tree, we mean this tree is balanced. That what we mean by balance. So if I suppose I have 10 in the root, that is mean any node in the right side have to be greater than 10. Okay, and any node in the left side have to be less than 10. So now if I want to add value on this node, I have to, have to be greater than 10. Let's suppose I have 12 here. And the right have to be less. Let's suppose I have 8. And not only in this way, you have to continue. That means any other node. For example, this node. The value on the left should be greater than 12. On the right, sorry. And the value on the left should be less than 12. So I would say... The value on the, on the right, greater than 12, I say 13. The value on the left, you could not say I have here 9, because 9 is less than 12. That's right, it's less than 12, but you did not satisfy this condition. It have to be anything on the right side have to be greater than 10. So that means the value have to be greater than 10. So you could use only 11 here. That right? Do you, do you understand? So you have to be 11. So just think about it. Whenever you have node, any node in, in the right of it have to be greater than it. Any one of the left of it have to be less than it. So you have 8 here. You have left and right. For the right have to be greater than 8. So I would say 9. You could, you could not say 11 because 11 is greater than 10. You did not satisfy the condition for 10. So you, you, would say you have to use value that satisfy other nodes also say okay this should be 9 so 9 is less than 10 and you have 7 so now just go through 3 again is it balance yes so any value any node for example 10 any value on the left 10 is less than it any value on the right 10 is greater than it any other node selected you will have same condition and this is what we mean by binary tree or, or binary search tree now let me think about how you we do some operation with this tree. Let me try to do add. You add node. So you want to add uh, 10. Not 10. 16. How you add 16? First of all you say, hey, is the value greater or less than 10? Is it greater? So go to the right because any value on the right will be greater than the node. So now is the value greater or less than the value is greater than because 16 is greater than 12. So go to the right again. Is the value greater or less than the value? Even if it's greater, if it's greater, add it as a right. That means, yes, it's greater, so add it in this side, 16. Did you see how I would add node? So how much time you would take? you think it would take to add this node? N time, because you would search for N until find the element, then you would add it. So let me suppose adding another one. I would suppose add, I would say 5. Is that good? Yes, 5. I would say 5. Is 5 greater than 10? No, less than 10. So go to the le left side. Is the 5 greater than 8? No, it's less than 8. So go to the left side again. Is the 5 greater than 7 or less than 7? It's less than 7. So just go to the left side. So add it in the left because it's less than 7. 5. Did you see? Let me suppose now you want to add element like let's suppose you want to add uh, anyone anyway you say add mm, 14 how you would add 14 okay let me just clean this one again and think about how, how you add 14 say okay to add 14 I will go here is it 14 greater or less is it greater so to go to the right is it greater or less a greater go to the right is it greater or less a greater go to the right is it greater or less? Is less than? So it go to the left. So there is nothing in the left. Add me and the left. Did you see how it's working? Yeah, this is the way how you could add node to binary tree. So how much time you would take for adding this node? For sure, n time. Because why? 
this so o of n will be for add operation add o of n will be n because you take n time until adding the element what about search if you want to search for number 11 how you would search for it say so, okay i will start the node is it the number i'm searching 11 greater or less greater so it should be in this side so i will never explore this side never because it's not in this side never it's not in this side okay so go next is it greater than i'm looking for 11 it's less than 12 so go to the left it is 11 yes so you would take n time to find the element so for the searching also you would take n time now you understand search and you would understand for sure you understand insert so let me talk now about delete delete have different process not same as insert and same as the search because if you want to delete this element it's really easy for you to delete it because it's last element the node doesn't have no child it is you just delete it and you are okay but if you want to delete node have single child let me suppose you want to delete this one so how you would delete it you cannot delete it directly because there is another node here so you have to swap between 14 and 16 you say okay I would swap between this node 14 and 16 so I was 16 here 14 here now I was able to delete 16 you remove it from the tree this is how you remove the 16 as I told you, if this is the last element you want to delete, this directory could remove it because it doesn't have child. And if you have one child, also you could remove it without any problem. But the problem is, if the node have two child, like this one, how you would delete it? This is basically it's not easy. Because first thing, you need to do swap. You say, okay, I would swap this one by this one. I will move 9 in that way and 8 here. You say, okay, 9 here. 8 here now I could delete it because 9 is still greater than the child is it greater than 9 greater than 7 yes so 7 should be always so but this is not always work because there is many cases maybe you want to delete this node there is many node effects you have many swap so make sure from it you have a three condition with the delete maybe no child maybe have one child maybe have two child the problem yeah, that happened with two child you cannot connect it directly with a parent because the parent will have a three you cannot you cannot say okay remove this one and connect this two child here you cannot do that because this will be have three child and the binary three have to have only two child so make sure from this point this is basically how binary tree work. So, and that's what I want to share with you. Let me go to the code implementation and see.
welcome let me talk in this video about how to find path between two nodes in binary search tree this problem have been seen in my amazon job interview so before we start learn how to find path between two nodes in binary search tree let me first learn was the binary search tree so binary search tree is just normal tree but every node could have a two child so this one could have two this one could have two and this one could have two whatever the rule in binary search tree for a given root every node in the left side should have a lower value than the node and uh, than the root and every nodes in the right side should have higher value than the root so given this one for example if the root have eight so we would assume any value on this side should be higher than 8 and any value in this side should be lower than 8 okay so here for example in this node you should have a value higher than 8 so for example let's assume here we have a 10 and still here again this is a 3 for, so for given 10 the left side should be less than the root so for example 9 and the right side should be higher than the root so it should be 11 so 9 10 11 same thing this one so if i have a 5 here the left side should be for example 4 and the right side should be 6 if you look to the graph and bit more deep you could see it's very clear any node in the right in the left branch have a less value or have a value less than the root and any node in the right branch have a higher than the root for example all these values is greater than 8 because the 8 is the root so I have 10 9 11 and same thing for the other side of the root all these value is less than 8 you have 4 5 6 okay now same thing given this the sorry given this sub root let me just put this line back given this sub root again any value on the left is less than the root and this one the right greater than the root and same thing for other side of the three the goal in this task we want to find path between two nodes for example if i tell you find a path between oh 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 i tell you find path between 4 and 11 you should tell me i could have 1 2 3 4 it should give me 4 so the path is 4 if i tell you uh, the path between uh, for example let me just pick two different nodes so you understand what is the path between um between four and six how many travels i need to do to go from four to six looking here i have this one and this one okay so i have two here because both of them they share same this path so we don't need we don't need we don't need to to mention it so this path is shared so we, we don't need to mention it so this is very basic so my idea to solve this problem so if you tell me hey could you find the path between this node and this node first of all i find how many edge i have to visit to the first node and how many edges i have to visit to the second node and I will take off any shared visited edges between the two paths to find how many uh, steps I need to do because there is no way for you to know information about the tree this tree beside knowing the root so only given information for your method should be the root so using the root you should find path for find the path for this node for example and you should find the path for this node and and you take off whatever shared and keep only this one and the left and right okay so this is how we will go to solve this problem 
Now let me start step by step solving this problem. But first we need to implement uh, the binary search tree. So I will just create a new a package and I name it com uh, dot problem problem tree. Okay. So this is a package. I have it. And I will create a class inside that package, name it node. So I would name it node, and I would expect the node could have a constructor. So I just create constructor. So for node, I'd expect every node, as you seen in the graph, uh, we have it. Every node could have a value and could have a node in the left side and could have a node in the right side. So you could, let me just say we have value as an integer is the value for the node and we have a node in the left side which is left node okay and I have a node in the right side which is right node okay which is very simple and now I have just to uh, do the initialization for these three variables so I would assume I have integer for the uh, value I have a node in for the left node and I have a node for the right node okay and I need just to set them this is just data class so this uh, this dot value will be equal whatever you have it in the value and this dot left node you will be equal whatever you have it in the left node and this way and this dot right node it will have whatever you have in the right node okay it just it just data class in java i just like hey whenever anyone want to create a node the node should have a left node in the left and the right node uh, in the right okay so this is the very very basic creation and for me i have another class which is binary search tree so i will create another class and I will name it a uh, class. I will name it binary search tree. Okay. Uh, we could name it binary search tree find path, whatever, whatever. Just name it binary search tree. And just say I need to create a main method. I don't need a constructor. That's mean I just need to have a main method. Okay. So when we talk about binary search tree, there is some informations we need to know. If you remember from the graph, I told you always in the binary tree, you will be given the root. So the root you will always be given for you. So I would assume here to start, we have a node, name it root. This should be the root for your tree. You have it always, always you have this information. And to build your tree, always you need to have a method, name it. Let me name it method, name it public void add and this method whenever you want to add a node so you always uh, get a value as an input and I would assume um, you have here next node or visit node you name it visit node and uh, this should be a node I will tell you what this means in seconds okay so for example or you could name it root clone to make it more easy because you it will be the root so first of all if someone want to create a new instance from binary search tree so if someone is say okay I have binary search tree it will be BST equal new instance of the binary search tree I would say binary search tree dot add I want to add for example five Oh, let me do it similar to this tree that we have. So uh, first node will be added is eight. So we say eight. Someone want to add eight. So first of all, you give him the root as a start point. So always you give the root. So be, so uh, uh, the the tree will know how to travel. But here, if you see, he say okay, root is now. You don't give him any information about about the root. Root something is not static. I can't access to. So it should be. You could give him bst.root because you need to access something outside the static. Okay, that is. I would assume like first of all when someone create 
initialize this class which is named public binary search tree I will just set the root to null okay I just want to make sure like hey when someone create an instance from binary search tree I will just initialize the root to the null so first we go add it and whatever we start so for how to add a node in binary search tree first of all we make sure if the root equal null that means there is no node here well what I do I say okay I will create my new node and make it a root so I will say okay the root will be equal uh, the new node if you remember if you remember the node it is in the binary search tree uh, well a new node in this way and you remember the node take three things left node left right, right node and null and for a start we don't know what's the left and one the right so I would say the left is null and the right is null I have no information about left node and right node so just create a new node so it will go here and it will create a new node for me it have a left child null and right child null as a start point if it you say if it uh, root and also make sure it's your turn because I don't want to continue but what if this current root is not the node that currently we are in is not the root node it is like we are adding another 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 uh, element to the binary search tree so for example going to back to that figure what to the value we add we add we want to add for example 5 and 10 okay so I say okay I want to add 5 and I want to add 10 okay see always you give him the root as a start point for the pointer to move on because the root always the start point so here you give him it will you will get 5 so now the 5 is not the root now we need to make sure from the value say okay if the value greater than the whatever this one current node dot in this way dot value because the current I'm visiting okay if it's a cool greater than that node I need to check something I want to see if this node dot left side is null or this node is null I could say if this node dot left dot uh, it's so if my value greater than that one so I will check the right the right side of the node the right side of the node is is uh, equal equal null that means I will add the new node there so I will say okay my new node should be here so my uh, a new node which is the the new node I say how I define I just need to define my a new uh, my new node here so I will how to define it I would define a new node and I just add it to the right side so I would say okay node dot right side will be equal a new node okay I'm just adding my new node to the right side of the tree which have a value of zero and null and null okay just think about it you say if there is no child in the right side I want to add this one otherwise I will be revisiting my add again because I am not in the right place I would say okay go please with root clone dot right because this is not null there is more nodes in the right maybe say so go this one with the value that you have it okay so take the value you have it revisit the node okay so basically if we are in here and we add for example we want to add 9 it will go hey is, is there is left uh, is there a child on the right side yes 10 okay take 10 now on the 10 is there a child on the right side take 11 and continue continue until it reach for the same example will be used for the the right side of the tree so if the value less than the cloned value I would say check if the left node is a cool null I will add that value as a left node otherwise I will be revisiting with the left node okay and that it will continue until it will do everything for us because this is how we'll, we'll, we will build the tree 
so you could give it 5 10 let me just add more notes 5 10 what else I have I have uh, uh, I have 9 11 I have 9 I have 11 I think I have 4 5 6 4 5 6 I have um, 5 for example it depends how you insert the element 4 5 uh, 6 because always it pulls the tree based on how you insert the element. Now we understand how we and how we insert all these elements. Now we have the trees already. Should we should have it ready? Now we just need to find a path. So to find path, I just define public method. Okay, public void, and let's name it find path. And for example, this one I want to find a path. Uh, from as I said I want if I give it a node this one as a 8 I want you to find the 4 for example I give it 4 on the root and it should go and say it like it will go add 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 until it reach here but it always keep track the line that visit like if it go from 4 to 5 it will tell you hey I went to 4 to 5, uh, so for example I visited 5, then I visited uh, I, I visited 4. Okay, so basically it will be this way. This method will take integer for value I'm searching for, search value, and it will take uh, in the current node, which should be this one type of node because you get the current node and you do same what we did here same thing but here if you see we just use we will use a different way so in the find path you want to see wait a minute the find path let me just copy all this code and see how we could find path similar to this code so to find path for example I would check hey if the current node dot value Oh, cool whatever the value I'm searching for that's mean I find my element okay that's mean I find the element element is found or just your return and uh, now if the value greater than the current node I'm no longer adding I'm just going back is that right yeah I'm going back to the to the left side oh and when the figure is less than I'm just going to the right and left side so that's now I no longer have a root node I have a clone node and this is how it be deal with okay and uh, now I don't have value I have searched value the same thing I just try to same how we added we just search now this one whenever uh, it, it visit the node it just increase it by you could just increase it by one until you reach that node but we need to make sure like the node that being visited by one it could be taken off if it, vis if it visited by the second tree so I would say I have an array list here array list of integer one I would name it I would name this one visited node okay visited visited notes okay will be equal to a new all right okay so whenever I visit any node I will just add that node in my tree so if if, if this is not my node I just say okay please add it add that node if I just reach it here I say okay add that value you could add it here or you could add it you could add anywhere. Okay. Uh, where we add it? I would think whenever I visit a node, I just add it here. I say, first of all, before I add it, I say, hey, if something otherwise added. 
So I say if visited node has that value dot contains that value that you're searching for, I am not going to add it because that means this one already visited by a different person. If it's not containing, it just add it. But I need always to track the path. I say integer uh, steps, okay, equal zero. Now, based on this steps, if it's not visited before, I will increase the steps. Because hey, I'm not visiting, I did not visit this node before, please add it. If this node already visited, that means they share same path, I will take it off. That's what we had the issue here, if you remember. So for example, if the first one said I visit 5, 4, like this, show you in a second. So for example, I told you path between this one and this one. You say the first one, the path is 5, 4, so you have a two steps. And this one will have a 5, 4. I think again two steps, but because this one also have 5, you will take one from this one. And you will have only two steps. Okay. So, let me test. We say just uh, find path. Oh, it's not this way. I would say binary search tree. Binary search tree dot find path between what between four I always try to give it the root see always the root is the one that we use it to find the path and I was I would say between four and six and now I will say hey, could you please print to me the path steps Okay, and I would like to see what the node that been visited. Okay, so I would say, print please, uh, visited nodes. Maybe for debugging only. I would say visited node. Visited. Ah, this one, whatever. And uh, because both of them par part from binary search tree, so they always should be this way. That's because I don't like to define the amount of static. So here's it. It should be good. Now, if I just or so I just find path, I give you the path and make sure if the visited contain the search value. That's wrong. It should make sure if it the search path contain the value that I'm looking for or the value on the path. If not, just add it in the node. Now, if, if this current value just go back, that's correct. If it's greater than call add node, should call the add find path. Just recall the method itself, and this one is called the method itself. Okay, so now just go on low rerun. This should tell you two. Okay, that's right, because based on this graph, the path between four and six should be two. So looking to this one, okay, here. Uh, 4 and 6, you have two only steps to go from 4 to go from 4 to 6. Okay, only two steps. And the news that visited is 8546, and you could see it here 8546. When he visited the nude again, which is 5, he, 8 and 5, he took them out because they are already there. Now, if I tell you, hey, could you please find path between uh, uh, this node? And let's assume the 9. So you would say you have 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so let's see if we have 4 and 9. Hopefully, I just build the node correctly. Okay, so run again four steps four five eight whatever so this is like how to how to solve the problem hopefully everything was clear and thank you for watching and see you next day. let me talk in this video about the homework so the homework for you is finding the subtrees what i mean by that the homework is if i ask you hey delete node a you have to tell me 
if you could find two or call it three or not so if you see if i delete a i have two call it three here i have a three node and here i have a three node that's mean you say yes they are equal just you have to tell me this thing and if i ask you to delete for example this node you say i have three trees now i have this one one element this one element and this one have four element so yes this is your homework think about it and pass the video for a second let, let me give you a hint pass the video think then come back again you done let me give you a thinking if you want to explore a tree and find the bar of node what you say you say okay i implement this function integer uh, explore for root okay you have to return here you say uh, for example if null of root equal equal null return uh, uh, go back because you're done so else what you have return you have to return you say if because this is just we suppose it's a uh, binary you say one plus explore for root left dot left and one plus explore root for right okay let me suppose if you access to now you return zero so you could sum them with it so yes this is basically this method return number of nodes if i send if i send a he will find if i send for example a he say hey the number of nodes connected to a is a three by three six if i send c he say the number of nodes connected by c is two just return number so if i give you this node you have say okay you have to call explore for for example a dot left explore for a dot right for example a dot left will give you three a dot right Chris if you say if for example explore for example let me suppose integer a integer b say if a or call or call b that mean print or call otherwise there is error but this is basic does not solve the problem sometime you will have this problem when I ask you to delete this one you say okay left and right but you have a parent also you have to take care about this one so how you see, how you check if there's a parent for it and how to fix it basically every node now a have two two pointer left pointer and right pointer and have parent pointer like like uh, what i mean by that maybe we did not discuss before you see when you have node now you now a have left pointer and right pointer and have parent pointer so if i have here he b have left right and have parent pointer and this one if I have a c left right and have parent pointer parent mean refer to the parent this one left to this one or right left to this one you have to think about it in this way to solve this problem here we done and thank you for watching hey everybody let me talk in this video about a problem of the day this is a problem i'm sure 100 percent you will get it in your job interview because i got this problem with microsoft and amazon both ask you same question so what's the problem yes i would say if if they if they like they say okay you have numbers like one then you have one and you have two then two then you have three 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 and you have four and for example four again five sorry then five again so they ask you have this input and implement function for us return uh, only the like unique number so that, that your function should return only one and two and three and four and five this is your return function so the idea behind this question is no one could solve this equation with code complexity less than n square do you know why i will tell you why because you have numbers so you would use at least four loop to move through the numbers then whatever that structure that you would use it it will take n time so for example if you use hashing you will you will take n time to insert or to delete or to search so n time 
for every element if you want to insert it or read it and you have n elements so n by n will be n square so you would not find any solution for this problem less than n square if you try to represent it as a tree like uh, binary search tree for example b s t so in binary search tree you say okay i have node one then you then uh, you add another one this is one yes i have one i will not add it then you go to add two is in this side then another two you will not add it then three then another three you will not add it then you another three will not add it then four then you you they came with five you will add five then you don't have more five if you see this one this binary search tree represent in this way so you will take n time to insert any element and how many elements you have how many elements you have n elements so n by n will be n square so even in binary search tree it will take n square so now we have to think about different representation for our binary tree to handle all this information so here we come through another concept named as name it balance tree okay balance tree that mean your tree will be balanced so number of node you have it in the right will be equal of the number of node you will have it in the left of the tree so if i suppose six element i will have one then i have two for example then three then i have four five then i have let me suppose i have it here six so what the element you would have it if i just look uh, look i have five element i don't have six element so uh, let me suppose i don't have this one just five element i have it so if i just take this part off hopefully yes so five element i have it so what the root you would think should be at least two here the root so what i have here should be at least four and here i have a three and i here i have five and here i have one so if you see I just did different representation for my binary tree, but this type of binary tree named balance. So when some, if, if I suppose there is more two node here, here I have two node. For example, let me suppose I have two node here. Should be, for example, this one will be uh, zero, and this one will be one point five. For example, okay. So this but tree is balanced. So let me suppose again I have zero here, and I have one point five. I have another number so see just I represent this information as balance information so a number of node on the right will be equal to the number of the node on the left so now what we have if you do if you want to insert how long how much time you will need I have first then if I go here I I half the of the element taken off then if I go here half of the element again taken off so if I have one then I have two then I have four and in every level I go, half of the element will not be considered for my search, should be login. Is that right? So login. Insert any element will be login. Access to any element will be login. How many elements I have? N element. So how much time will take this one? N for N element. Login for every element insert or delete or access. So here I will have N login, while here I have N square, and here I have N square. So, this type of a problem could be solved using balance tree. One type of the balance tree, name it red, black tree. So, red, black tree. Make sure I just change the color so you would understand what I'm saying. So, red, black tree. So, this red, black tree that we'll discuss in the next video will allow us to represent any information using a tree so whenever you have this problem and you don't have any data structure for it and your uh, or your data structure will represent represent the problem with n square make sure you use this concept like balance the tree so yeah let me go next and see how we do red black tree and hopefully you will see this question in your interview and you will answer thank you for watching and see you next hey everybody that we talk in this video about how we do implement the red black tree so red black tree has number of rules you have to know it and you have to have it in your tree first of all every node will be either red or black 
Second rule, every null node is black. Third rule, every royal red node has two black child node. Okay, but if you have a node as a black, there is no uh, condition to have two red. But the red have to have two black. So make sure from this point. This point also very important. Every path from the node X down to the left have same number of black nodes that we will check it now so if you go from the root and you go down to the end you have to have same number of a black node in, in every branch another one another rule uh, rule say the root node is always black so make sure the the root will be always black then the sixth rule whenever you add any new node this node should be red then you change the color so make sure from these rules then let we start with violation so if you have that rules that we discussed before that means your tree is a uh, balance and your tree is red black tree but this tree may have violation so there is a three case scenario can make your tree violation and we will say we will discuss how to solve this violation so if you have this tree have a b c a black b c is red when you add a new node d so now what you have you have a new node d and you have the parent and uncle is red if you see the uncle is c here c here is the uncle so if the uncle is red and the new node is red and you have this case this me in this case you need just change the color so what we will do we just change the color of a to red then we change bc to black and we fix the problem really easy and really straightforward this case so if you have this case make sure change it to this case then later on you will change the root you you know the root should be black then you change the the root to black because we have one of the conditions the root will be black so just first change it to this state then you change it to the color and you will see it next second case scenario may happen if you have node and which, which is b and you add a new node red which is d now you have the parent and uncle but the parent is red and uncle is black if you have the parent is red and uncle is black and your node located on the left side of the tree to as a right child so if you see here this is the tree this is left side and it is the right child so what you have to do if you have this case and the, the ankle is uh, black so in this case you have to do this thing first of all you just swap the d and b the the child with the parent so d will be up and now because d is greater than b so b should be located on the left side of the tree so if you see now what i have i have b d then b on the left side it was right and we change it to the left because you know this is the binary search tree so always greater uh, the less number should be on the left the greater number should be on the right so if you have this case you have to change it to this case now we change our tree to case three we will discuss case three how to fix this problem so just first you change it to case three so this change will be changed to case three so now we may have another scenario i have child c and c have the child on the left of it which is d now what i have i have my parent is c which is red and my uncle is d b is b sorry which is black so it is same uh, case two the previous one but the opposite now the opposite what we mean we mean by that the node my parent located on the right side and i'm located to the left side of my parent if you have this case it is on the right side my parent and i'm on the left side so you have to change it to case three what we will do same thing we just move d up we move c down and make it as a right child did you see we change it to the right side so now i have case three so i could fix it so what is case three case three is basically this one as you see it previously either you have red located on the right side and have child to write to it or you have red located on the left side and you have child to left to it so if you have this first case i have my child 
and C, I'm, I'm my parent is C, I'm, I'm located to the right of the my parent, and we are both read, red, we cannot, we said that any red have to have two child, either black, two, two black child, so red and red doesn't work, so we have to change it, what we have to do, we just do shifting, so what do we mean by shifting, first of all, we have A, we just take it down, then we have B, and just if you see I just move a B I move it C to up then D then after I'm do this moving I, I do change coloring so make sure you just do swapping what we mean by swapping I have this case I'm I'm red my uncle is black I'm located to the right side what I have to do I'm doing shifting so that's mean uh, this one will go up if you see C is go up then this one is going up that one shifted to the right to the left side so we have this case then we, you change the color so that work that we will see it in the example in details another case we said if I'm located to the left side of the tree and my child located to left of me and we are both red and my uncle is C which is black so this case again you do shifting but what the shift we have it first of all you move a, B to up then D was going after it then A then C did you see you just we just shift the three you just shift we shift just this one to the up this one go down down then ad then you change the color now we just directly change the color let we go step by step about this problem and how we could solve it so to get started i will show you basic problem my problem for this day is this i have one two three four five six and I want you to represent this one using red black tree. So first of all, I have one. I want to add it to tree. We said whenever we add any node, the new node should be red. So okay, I have a new node which is a one, and we said every node have two or every end node have two null black, as we said in the or condition. So two black ended. This is just null node. We say the in the condition of the red black tree, the null node should be black. So what the problem I have here? In my tree, it is the root, here I have it red, the root should be black, so I just change it, change the color, so color, I change to one, and one half to end, we say there is no condition to black to have to have child as red, but red have to have black, so yes, I added one, so let's go to add, uh, we will add, which, which one we add two, so what do you think, I will add two, so I have a here, two should be located in this side, one here and this one will be ended from this side so I have two two should be red color so I add two here and this one have two child so I just say yeah I have two child one if both of them should be black so if you look if you look through this tree do you have any problem no if I start from here I have one black two black that's cool one black two black cool one black two black that's mean I'm satisfied this condition that is said every path should be equal number of black tree again uh, black node again the root is is black I don't have any I don't think I have any violation here so let's go more forward and add more node we will add now three so I think about how you would add a three first of all make sure you have one up and one have one child to it on the left so because you are binary search tree we are going into this side and we have the node which two which is we have it already now if i want to add a three three should be located on this side so i have to do this way i say okay i have two here and i have here something ended so make sure you add two in this way two should be red whenever you add any new node should be red so i have two and i have here uh, two and it should be black so do I have any violation here yes I have I have two then three so just this one just make sure this one is three I just write it two I'm adding a three so this one should be three if you wanted a red color will be better because we are doing red black three so two nude one after other which case this one I'm on the left I'm on the right my child is located on the right of my cell, my node and my uncle if you see the ankle hair is black so which case here if you have it if you look I think should be this case violation 3 I'm located to the right my child to write me so I just need to do shifting so first of all we do shift 
So what the shift you have to do? I'm just moving it through the grandparent. This one should go up. This one should go after it. So make sure from this way. I have, uh, first of all, let me just uh, do it. The two will be the root. Is that right? Yes, we are moving around the parent. Then a three, I have it here. And uh, one should be located in this way. I'm doing shifting. Then I have one have two end. I don't care. And a three should have again two end black. Now, do I have any problem here? Yes. Uh, now I have this one is red. Uh, this this one is uh, is red and have a red child so if you see in the, this case what we did after we move it we just change the color so just swap the color so you just go to this way case you say I would say this one will be a black for two and it have two child two red child so this is how swapping the color this is how the case three work so you just change one to red and you change three to red and yeah you continue with the end of your tree i have this one ended this one ended and this one ended this one ended um yeah i'm all set i have how many uh, uh, black i have black node one two on this side one two of this side one two of this side one two of this side do i have violation no let me go forward and add node number uh, five, four so hopefully four so i have root is two the two have two nodes one this side one this side both of them are red so make sure i am adding here is one and i have here three and one should be ended by two black end and th three should be from this side ended when I add four four should be located on this side and should be again red because I'm adding a new any new node should be red so I'm adding which node I will add I will add four and four again has two uh, black node so do I have any relation here yes I have red after red that's relation so which case I have it I'm here my parent is red my uncle is red so which case if you look here Case one, if you see here, case one, say it. If I'm red, my parent is red, and my uncle is red. So I just change the color, change the fruit, then change this color. So I would say, okay, which is not, which is not, which is not something complex. I just change the root to red. I would say two is red, so I should see one. So it should be two, and these two three should be black, black. So I have one here and i have a three here and when i have one three one should be ended here i don't have anything more and uh, i have a three a three have a black hair and have one red in this way so make sure you add the red one correctly which is four you add four here and yes four have two child which is uh, black so one two do i have any problem with the tree now i do i have a problem fix it but i have a problem the root should be a black you cannot have root as red so i'm just you change it so let me just clean the screen for you so just make my work easy okay so you could work easily uh, i just move it so just to clean the screen so you could you could know what we are doing now so this is the last case that i'm in so make sure you just remove this one. Yes, hopefully, hopefully everything is cool. Yes. So now I just move to a new case, which is I'm taking this one. This case I will start from here, just to have space. So two should be black. One still black. I will not change one. One have two child. And I have three hair located. Three have one black in this side and have a red red one so you have to make sure i have red hair red which is this one th four i don't know why i s i hear the horn now <laughs> in my in my apartment so yes i just do this too and i'm fix the problem so just make sure i just remove this part i no longer need it because i need to work on my tree correctly hopefully yes so now this is my tree i'm happy with it 
is it balance it is binary search tree now let me add a new node which node i need to add at five so i have one here i have sorry two up here one here is two i didn't change anything here i have a three and here i have four so make sure your four should be in red did you see how the coloring and how the swapping and yes this is four so now we end it i have to end this one with two black and i have to end this one with one black and this one have to end with this one black but it have to have red on the side because you are doing binary balance tree so i just add another red here and this red should be five and yes what i have to my child i would say two black child and we think almost we are done but we have violation here i'm a black i'm red my parent is red my uncle this will null node which should be uh, my null node which should be uh, black so which case i have it here i think case three if you see it um on the right side my ankle is, is, is black i'm located to the right so just doing a swap so first of all we just we just move do swap so we just move around the grandparent where is the grandparent here is this is a three grandparent so three should go on this side so i have one keep it in the place oh sorry two in the place i have one here i have here what i will have i have four because you are moving around the grandparent so i have four here and uh I have three will be here three should be the end if you see it should be three make sure they are two ended here I don't have anything more this one will be ended and what I have more more left I have four here so what other four I have because four is moving up so now I have here five should be five should be red so five I have here I have five here and I have both ended so now everything is cool i just do change color so these both should be black and this one sh should be red and this one should be black as we said so continue from here i change color i would say i have five i have two up i have one in this side i have two null node i have four should be black we said and this one have two child would be red both of them red which is one of them is three and another one is which one another one is five and what we have more left we have null nodes so make sure null 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 and we are all set how many uh, nodes i have one two three black one two three one two three one two three black one two three black one two three everything cool adding six i don't think six will be complex because i have my everything is clear if you just just add line here i have here two and i have one here and the one is ended both and i have here i have four and i have two four have two child which is a three and five i have a three here and i have five here where is the five uh, and i say three have two black child and five have one of the left and we're adding six six should be located on this side so six here should be again red six and we have just to change the at the end it so if you see end and if you see I have violation i'm red my parrot is red my uncle is red so which case if you remember this case red 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 just changing color it's not something complex so you have to just go to this side uh, i'm red my so what i will do i change this one to red this both to black so i will say one i have sorry two i have here i don't know why i was changed it to one here i have one here two ended uh, and i have here this one should be changed to red because we just swapping color so i have to do four here and what i have left i have left this one should be three should be have to end and i have here five should be again as we say then 
I have go to six. Six is still red. I don't change it. I just doing that case. So I have six here. And what I have left, I have to end it a tree. So let me just make sure is all three correct. Do you have any violation? Our first is the number of, of black. One, two, three. 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 So I have number of black nodes correct. The red, every red have two black. Every red have two black. I don't have any violation. Maybe the violation be up. You just need to fix it. So yes, this is basically how I represent it. So now if you add any element in this tree, you will take log n time, any element. If you have number of elements, so it should be n log n. Here we done and thank you for watching. Let me talk in this video about graph representation and how we could represent our graph. So first of thing, what we mean by graph? Graph means we have number of edge and this edge are connected using vertex. If I, when I say edge, I mean I have circle and I have another circle and these two circles are connected using vertex. So another one connected with it. You see this one in binary tree, I think. Yes, you see it. Well, this one is different totally from binary tree. So think about this graph. So I have this graph that have a number of edges, and the graph started from here. Let me suppose I have here 1, I have here 4, I have here 6, 8, 10, and I have also here 12. So don't think about it as a binary tree. Think about it just normal graph. Simple graph have number of edge and this edge connected. If you see every node are connected to another node using a vertex but this vertex undirected so that's mean there is no this there you don't have this sign if you have this sign that's mean this graph is directed but because you don't have it that's mean this graph is, not, is undirected so you cannot solve this problem using a graph you have to have some some way to represent it to solve it so a simple way to represent this this graph we would use a matrix so how you do that let me suppose how many edge i have how many I have one two three four five six that mean I have I have to have array six by six so let me suppose I have this array and this here you go I hope everything is doing good hopefully hope the two line is not is not so cool so yeah let me cut it again yes here you go I have this line and again I have same line here and this two line it's just array 6 by 6 I would represent it using array 6 by 6 two dimension array I mean by that when I say array I mean two dimension array so 6 row 6 column so let me, let me divide first for 6 column 1 2 3 4 then I have 5 and 6 there you go and I have six rows so I would say okay let me divide it in the horizontal mode so hopefully one two three four five six this is basically how you present it using array so what the node I have I have one if you see here I have here I have one and here four and six so I say four six then I have 8, 10, 12. So I will say I have 8, 10, 12. So this is this is the node that I have within the graph. I would use same node in horizontal mode. So same that I have 1, then 4, then 6, then 8, then 10, then 12. So now let we do the connection so do, do I have connection between 1 and 1 no so I would add 0 if I don't have connection I add 0 because there is no connection between 1 and 1 if I have this line that's mean yes I have connection but I don't have any line between 1 and 1 so I don't have connection do I have connection between 1 and 4 so if you see yes I have one so I would say yes so you add 1 do I have connection between 1 and 6 yes I have one if you see it here is it so you add 1 do I have connection between 1 and 8? No, I don't have any connection between this one and this one. There is no connection, so I would add 0. Same thing for 10. Do you have connection with 10? No, there is no connection between 1 and 10, so no connection. So I would add 0. 1 and 12? No, 0. So you see, I don't have this line of connection for the 1. You do some process for, for other 
hopefully delete this one you do the same process for other so that we start with four so what i have what node i have it here four so four is four have connection with one so i'm here in the, with the four that connection with one yes it have because this one undirected so they are connected so you say add one is four have connected with four no is four have connected with six no is four have connected with eight yes because there is line between four and six four and eight and four and ten also there is line so you say yes here and you say also yes i have here if one four and twelve no you add zero so this is basically how you describe this two node so did you see how you represent the this node using a graph it's basically really easy let me continue with other node we have it so six if you see it six is it's here so it's connected to one and twelve so only with one and with it 12 it have ones but other zero so yes we done from six what about other one is eight so eight have connection only with four so you suppose only with four so you only have here one and other is zeros so what about uh, other one is uh, 10 so you say okay what about 10 10 have connection only with four so you say okay only i have here one on other stuff all zeros so what about other one that mean i mean by 12 12 which, which graph is connected 12 is connected only with six so go to six add one other one is zero so did you see how we represent this graph to this array this is a way of representing the graph using matrix this is mean matrix okay this way to represent the graph using matrix the matrix is represent not only direct graph it could represent direct and indirect graph so this graph that you see it is indirect okay because you don't have that edge if you want to change this graph another example for direct graph when i say direct that mean i have i have to have directions so that means this one in this way this one in this way this one in this way this way and this way this mean direct graph okay this one is direct a graph so now let we solve this problem using direct graph you see the solution will be totally different from the first one let me think about it for for first one you have it for one so what do you think about one one is one connected to if i select it here is one connected to 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 one no is one connected to four yes one connected to six yes other stuff is zero that's right i don't have any problem here because it is the source so let you go next to and we will have a problem here in four okay hopefully this is the four is four connected to one no do you know what because this is direct graph this is only going this side there is no way to go to this side direct graph that's mean only i could have relation between one and four i don't have relation between four and one because I, as I told you, this is direct graph. So I will say, no, this one is zero. Should be not one. Okay. Is four connected to four? No. Is connected to six? No. Is connected to eight and 10? Yes. Is connected to 12? No. This is four, four. Do you see? Let me continue and try to do it for other one. What about uh, six? So six. Is six connected to one? No. Same problem because I have only connection between one to six i don't have six to one so so this one should be zero not one so what about the second third do i have one to uh, six to twelve yes i have it no problem what about other one is eight so same thing eight is eight have connection to four no it's one directed so have to be zero is eight to have another connection no it doesn't have any connection to anyone because it's final what about same thing that we go next and talk about 10 so yes i would say what about 10 10 also doesn't have connection to anyone so it should be zero what about 12 12 also doesn't have connection to anyone because it is direct graph so it should be zero did you see how the graph changed when we change from direct and indirect this is how we could represent our data using using matrix but we we don't we we don't have only could you we don't we will not we could use another type to represent our graph we don't have to use matrix only so what other data structure we could use it to represent our graph the name of that structure is agency index okay uh, 
جيسي ليست So let what the agency list how the work that's what I will discuss with you. So we suppose I go back to the normal graph, indirect graph. Okay, let's remove this line. Okay, so to make so to make the code clear. Here we go. So how we represent the data using agency list? Agency list is really really easy way to represent your data. First of all, how many nodes I have? I have six nodes. You say okay, that's mean I have array of six. So array single dimension not two dimension array so make sure you use single dimension array having six element okay in this way up i just remove it again i have six element in this array okay so you would say okay what you have first you have number one one so i would say okay i have cell number one let me Name of this one you have I have cell number one. Number one is connected to four and six. So you would you would use link list. You add four and you add link list for six. Okay? This is link list. Okay, and this array. So every node have a link list to number of node. What about four? If I just go next and try to represent four. So you say okay, four is connected to one because it's direct graph or indirect graph and connected to eight and connected to ten and finally it connected to ground oh no what about eight so I have same thing for eight eight is connected only to four and it's done what about ten then only connected to four and it is done so what about six six only connected to one and connected to 12 and it is done what about 12 12 only connected to six this is when we use it in direct graph i mean there is no direction so what about if i want to do if i want to use direct graph that's mean uh, there is a line between them that mean i mean i mean when i use direct graph i mean by that uh, there is a line in this way so yes, so how let we suppose how we solve it, so you could understand it. First of all, I have between one and four, so this is path. It's okay. For four, I have only connection to eight and ten, so there is no connection between one. So directly for, to eight and ten, because not connection to one because direct graph. What about eight? Eight doesn't have any connection, so it have to be removed. And uh, ten doesn't have any connection. We have to be directly to grant, directly to grant. What about six? Six is not connected to one. Six only connected to twelve because, as, I, well, as we discussed, this is direct graph. So what about twelve? Twelve doesn't have any connection because it doesn't have connection to anyone. So this is the difference between direct graph and indirect graph. Yes, this is basically uh, how we do agency list and agency matrix to solve or graph. But let me now compare agency list and matrix which one is better to solve our problem so this is you will see this question a lot a lot in interview so which one is better to, to solve the, your problem i have matrix and i have agency list so matrix in this way and i have the list okay let me start from axis which one is better to access to any element? For sure, array, because array take O of 1 to access to element, while agency list, agency list is the same of hash map, so I take O of N to access to any element, because maybe I want to access element 4, but element 4, it have number of node connected to it. So we would say the better one in this point is matrix to do access. Second one, use memory. Use memory. Which one is better? For sure, you would say the agency list is better because it not use addition location. This one is worse because there's a many zero location. You would not use it in matrix while agency list only use what we need. So I would say this point for agency list. Third one, what about children or access to children? If you see in the agency list, it's really easy to access to all your children because you have it in this way, any node 
have number of children. It's really easy to access to all the children by now in the parent. So this one will be best to access to children, while this one is worse because in, in matrix, it's hard for you in this location to find who is the parent, who for which node is his parent. So we will say in this point is good point for uh, agency list. So finally, which one is better? Which uh, when we are interesting, most of work well done in the, our problem solution is uh, we look for use memory and look for access to children when we travel over a graph. So I would say in this one he give two point plus to this one. So always adjust this is best to solve our problem. And what this what we'll use in next video. All implementation for a graph we will use agency list. Agency list, the same of same structure of hash map, same, same. No not everything same, but only the using the matrix and using number of node. Yeah, so we're done. Thank you for watching us. See you next. As you talk in this video about depth first search and how we could travel over the graph to see if the graph is connected or not. What I mean by that, if I have this city and I have this another city, okay, the city one and the city two. And this city have number of places and these places are connected and this one have number of places and these places are connected. I want to know if the someone are sitting here I want to know could he access to this location could access or not so how I would know that I have to do some way to travel here and see if this two graph is connected that's what we name it of a graph or of connected graph to see if two graphs connected so if, if I now travel here until here I cannot go more that's mean hey you cannot go but if there is connection between these two city you could I could travel over here and see Yes, I could access to it. And this is what we will do with depth first search. So how we could solve our problem using depth first search. Let me just clean the screen and try to give you a basic graph problem and see how we could travel over using depth first search. So I would use this graph. I have this node and this node have to connect it to two node. I don't know. I just prefer always using this type of a graph, but I will give you another graph in this tutorial. I have A, B, C, and I have D, E, F. So imagine a person in city A, he want to go to city F, and he see how much city he have to explore, use to access to the city. The way to solve a problem with depth first search is by using a stack. So what do we mean by using a stack? That means I have to have stack first. So let me just take our stack and draw my stack I say okay I have this stack you say it. this problem needs a stack so yes this is your stack so how you solve it first of all we are in city A so what we will do what we have just because you will start from here so first of all he will take A and add it in the stack okay so the second thing what we will do when we talk about depth depth mean we go to the depth of the graph in this way that means we go to the left side of the graph. So now if I'm if I'm here, so what I will do, not only left, we would say going to the last order. So if I, if I have here A, I have B and C, which one is less? B. If I have one and two, which one is less? Is one. So okay, I have two child now for A. Which one I have to go? I have to go to the list. The last one is B. So just directly add B in the in the in the stack. Now, same thing will happen in the B. B say, hey, I have D and E. Which one is the list? D is the list. So add D in the stack. So until now, he visit the city start from, I just remove this one. He started from A, he went to B, he went to D. Now he find D is not the city that he knew it. And there is no more, no more visit, city to visit. He do bag tracking. When he do bag tracking, that means he will take city D out of the stack. So... He would add, for example, D here because this is this doesn't match my work. So I removed it from the stack. He went back to now where he is. Now he is in city B. So he is here. So let me just change the color for you. He is in B here. Now he want to go to last one. Last one is D, but D he already visited. He will not visit again. He will go to the another child. That's mean E. So he will go to this one so now he will add e here 
So did you see how he accessed to city E? So he to access to city E, he did this way. So let me just uh, remove this line for you so I would understand how he moved. To access to city D, he just started from A, he went to B. He did not went directly to E because this is the way how the first search work. He went here, then he went backtrack, then he went here. This is how the first search work. Let me take another example for the first search and see it how why is not the same way is not good. But we could use it almost. So yes. Let me use to give another graph. I would say I have this node and this is three nodes. Okay? And this node. And all these nodes are connected. Okay? This way. I would say I have here S and I have here A, B, C, okay, and D. Imagine he is in, he in city A, or he city S, and he want to go to city C only. So how he would travel with depth tester? Let me just clean my stack and start working. First of all, he will add city S. Now. What he which what are the next step for him? He have three child. Which one he will go? The last one. The last one is B. So he will add B in the graph. Okay? In the stack. Now he went to B. What he will do, he say, okay, what are, what other child I have it for sorry a, uh, sorry A, not B. I just mistaken. The last one is A. So he will add A. Okay? Now he in A, he would select where what the next. He have only D. He don't have more child for A. Because S already visited, he will not visit the uh, node again. He have only D. He will go to D. He will add D here. Okay. Now in the D, which child D have? D have three child. One of them is visited. A already visited. So he will he have choice to go either to B to C. He will go to the last one. Last one is B. So he will take B and add it. Now in the B, what he will do? C. So let me just remove this line to make it clear for you. B, and now I'm here in the B, so I have to go either to S or B, or to OD. S I already visited, D already visited, that means, hey, I'm done, I have to do backtracking, I have to return back. When he do backtracking, he take it, he take B out, so B will go outside the stack, so that means remove B. So now where, where, where we are now? Now we went back to D, okay? So now we are here in D. So now D have three choices, either A, B, C. A already visited, B already visited, he will go to C. So he would add C, and C is the requested. Did you see how he traveled to access to the target? This is what depth, this is how depth search search algorithm work, because it's going to the depth of the graph. He just start from here, he went here, then he accessed to here, then he went here. Then he did bag tracking, then he go here, instead of going directly from here. Yes, this is basically how the first search work. And let me go next and, de and, and discuss press first search. Thank you for watching and see you next. Hey everybody, let me talk in this video about how we do Amplifor depth first search algorithm. So, to get started first, let me give you a quick refresh. So, to work with depth first search, what you need, if I suppose I have a tree, so if I just use the draw tool, okay, I have suppose I have this tree on this node and this node and this node and here you go, too many nodes. So let me suppose this zero, this one, two, three, four, whatever. So how I present this thing, I need, first thing I need to define a JC list. That means I need to define array and every array have number of nodes connected to it. And that's what I will do as a first point for me. First of all, I define array with, I define a JSC list. So how I work with a JSC list, let me just create package. I name it com.graph. So what do you think? If you see it here, what do you think? I have first node and I have a JSC list. So let me just create node. So I say class, I will name it node. And I have only constructor, make sure you highlight this one. So what do you know every node have to have? Have to have value and also the node have to have uh, not only the value, I have to have a pointer to the next element. So what you suppose integer, I would do very simple, use integer value and node for the next element, okay, that you connected to. For sure, these two things have to be implemented here. So for node and for next, here you go.
اوكي نوت نوت نيكس نيكس ان نوت سو ان ان ذين بوث اوف ذيم يو سي ذيس دوت فاليو او كول فاليو ان ذيس دوت نيكس او كول نيكس اوكي هير يو جو اي جست جريت اي جست ان ذيس سيكشن اي جست جريت ذا نوت Now let me talk about the AJC list. How I created AJC is just list of node. So it's really easy. Say create a class, and you name this class AJC list. So I mean, you name it ADG list in this way. And does it have constructor? Does it have anything? Just have head node. So at least suppose have node of Head. I know it will be a little bit complex for you, but you'll understand now how we implement this array or this linked list array. So I have node and I have a JC list. So let's start with depth first search. To get a class, class, I just create a class. I name it depth first search, and let me suppose a graph. Depth first search graph. It'll be easy, and let me make the constructor. So uh, first point, we need to do this array. I mean, I mean by that array for the linked list. We suppose we said we have array. Of a JC list. So first of all, I define array size for the array, and I define my array. I say, okay, I have a JC list, a D J a JC list. I hopefully this one. This should be array of object. Here you go, array. Then when someone get instance from my graph, he have to give me the size. So I have to give me integer size. Uh, this dot size equal the size that I getted. Wait, this dot size equal the size. Then I need to do initialize for this array. So how I do initialize for this array? Say array equal a new instance of for sure agency this this one for this size. I just create array with that size. But the array, if I have a great array of object, as we understand, this doesn't mean anything. I need to initialize every element in this in this agency list. So what I mean by that? I mean I, by that I just discussed too much time with you. If I have array of object, but this is object does not initialize. I have to initialize every element in this object. I have to say every element should be node. So I have to say here for integer i equal zero, i less than size, then i plus plus. Then I would say yes. I'm just initialize it. So I say array for i equal a new agency. Because everyone is a a d j list, I so just a j c list, and I would suppose I uh, we say okay a j c list, but every one of these I need to know which the next element. This we suppose all the next element for as initial value as null because they doesn't have anything. So I would say array dot head should be null because I don't have any information for the next element right now. So yes, here is it, and here is the construct and initialization. Let me close this part. We done. Now let me start with adding a process. So I say public pub like void add. You add node. So how you would add node? First of all, you say integer the source that you want to add for it, and you say integer for destination DST that you want to add the node to it. Then you define your node. You say anti node and a call a new node. Okay. Then we'd have two things, have the value and the have the next element. I don't have any information now for the next, let me give it null. The value should be the destination. Okay. This is the process for adding node. I'm sure you understand what how the process for adding node. So if I have here, no, not this way. If I this agency see this, okay. I have this node. I want to add it. So how I would add it? First of all, I have this pointer. I make this pointer this one. This one already referred, maybe this one have already node and I want to add new node. I just, my new node, I make it refer to this one and this one refer to it. So easy process, I say my new node dot next refer what the array next is, is pointed. So what the array for the SRC for the source dot head, which pointer for the head my array pointed. Then I say, hey, I just replace the process. I say array dot head, just same thing when you do it with link this and here you go just adding the new element this process that i told you before this is how we add any new node to a jesse list and here we done we understand how to get a jesse node and how we get a jesse list and how we get array of a jesse list and initialize it and how we add node we done now let me do explore using depth search so what do you think 
I say public public void okay depth per search explore okay I'm exploring but I would get integer from where I start start where takes this way this from where I have to start I have I have I have to have a start point always when I when I do whatever I want to work do you remember when we talk about depth search, we say okay in depth search you have a number of nodes and we go to the depth and any node we visited we don't visit again we say okay if I have this graph and I would go to I would use a stack to save formation and it would go to depth and the node that I visit I will not visit again so first of all let me track the node that I visited I don't want to visit node two times so let me define boolean okay I would suppose visited the node that I visited a call a new boolean okay for the size what I mean by that I mean any node I visited I added here as a visit node so I will not visit the node again cool 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 then I would initialize this array also I say integer i equal zero i less than the size then i plus or plus then I say hey I'm done so please any node visited add false because as a start point I did not visit any node so I say false okay so here you go now what do you think we say use we use stack to keep track the process here so how we use stack you say okay let me define a stack but my stack in this way stack should be stack of integer so i say integer in this way so i say st whatever you name it you could name it s only yeah st will be better st a new stack of integer we just define stack to track the node any node you visited so you will not visit the node again yeah there you go so how how i do that first of all i would do stack dot push st not st dot push i push the element what the element the start vertex i just push it as the start point as the first point for my work just push it then mark this this uh, node as visited so before that I would I would start doing while loop and start moving see while the st dot is empty while while stack is not empty I am explore I continue explore the tree that's mean hey if my stack is not empty make sure this is small I say while the stack is not empty I will go to depth and work so how how I would work in the depth search first of all I pop last element in the uh, in the stack I say st dot pop then after i pop it i return it back i will tell you why i return it back later on because because i don't want to take element unless i visit all the child i would not remove element from the stack unless i remove all i visit all the child so i just take it to just get the end for it just get the number for it so i return it back then after i return it back i say hey i just returned the element not s why s st then you say okay st then you say okay visit it i just mark this one and as visited the call true because yes i visit this node so i no longer to visit again so what you talk it we say okay and here how it work do i will not work as a graph i will work as a jc list you have node and every node have number element now i marked this node as visited so let me go in deep to look through the child for this node and visit them. so you say okay node for head equal array for n dot head that mean i just taking the head element in the in this node then i say okay boolean is done you will see what is done mean is done mean i'm done from explore all the node for this parent i explore done that's mean i'm done explore all the node for this one so i could remove it later on from the queue from the stack so it's done it's done now true because i suppose it is done so then i say okay while head is not true or is not null that's mean i'm still having element to explore i say hey if the visited for the head dot src or dot destination what dot ds what head dot what I have is I have two things: head value and next. Okay, I just have value only. 
So I've visited dot head dot value. That's mean a call a call file. That mean I did not visit this node now. Right, until now I did not visit this node. That mean if it's not visited, please start visit this node. How I visit it? First of all, I say st dot push. I push this node to the stack. I say head dot value. I just push the, the node to the stack because I mark it as visited. Then if I push it to the stack, I would mark it as visited. Visited for the head dot value a call uh, true that means this node is visited then I'll say is done or is done a call false that means this node is still not done I still have child to visit then hey break it I no longer want to continue so just that means hey I have this link list having child maybe maybe I visit this first child I say hey this is half child so push it to the stack and continue our process so now if there is uh, if we continue continue pushing uh, otherwise if this element is not uh, the, the last one so I say else move to the next node that means if the node is visited check if, if the next node is not visited so I say head equal head dot next okay so I just go to the next element in the queue yeah just get to the next and continue. This is the while loop and I will continue. So when I will pop this element, when I pop this element, if, like the parent, and the, in the while loop, you will continue doing visiting all the kids for that one. But finally, we will done from, if you suppose this if else, this one should be this while. Okay, I say if is done, equal, equal true, that mean, hey, all the child is visited for this one, so take it off. So integer pop out, or call st dot pop, because I that's mean I visit all the child for this node. Then you say okay, so I s parentheses uh, uh, visit node. So whenever you visit all the child for the node, you have to print it. Okay, this is just the idea. There you go. This is basically how the first step. Really, it's a really easy process. So first of all, you take the first element, add it in the stack, then you check if the stack is not empty, take the element, return it back, mark it as visited, take the child for it, then mark is not complete. So take the head element path. If, if this first one is visited, go to the next. If the second one is visited, go there. If you find anyone is not visited, go visit it. Push it in the stack, mark as visited, change is done is not. Because when by done, when you done visit all the child for anyone, the done could be true, then take the parent out. And you continue. This is basically how death research work. So let me do a demo for you to show you how death research works. So uh, yeah, not package. I will great here. Uh, class and I will suppose doing demo okay and make sure I not get super on uh, this one okay that's cool so what do you think about the graph you say okay I have depth search graph you say okay depth search graph you get instance so I say graph or call a new instance of depth search graph let me suppose you have six element now you want to draw them so what do you think about six element you have them you say okay I would have array let me suppose it in this way you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You say they are connected in this way. Okay. I want to draw it to you to show you how you could implement this one. You say this one is zero, this one one, two, make sure to start from zero, three, four, five. So how you push child? You say okay, ch graph dot add. When you add, how you add? Who, the, who is the source, first of all? The source is zero. Zero is connected to two. Then zero connected to one. Make sure write the greater than before the less than. Because this is how our algorithm works. So you cannot say zero to one, then zero to two. Make sure two, then one. Make it so, so the less one, the idea behind what I'm saying, so the one will be here and the two will be here when you connect it. So this, when you want visit it, so to be first one to visit. When you visit, try to visit it using the code here. 
should be the first one to visit okay this is the idea what I'm saying so yes 0 1 0 2 they could continue let me continue with the other stuff yeah I just copy the code then I modify it so 0 1 0 2 then I have for one so one continue to uh, as I see one continue to four one continue to three one continue to zero did you see I connected then if you go to three so three continue only to to how oh, which element the three connected to you see it three connected to one only if I could say four four only also connected to one only if I say hey do for me the four then two two is connected to five and one so make sure you mention five then two connected to one then you say okay the five is connected to two just make sure do it in this way it's just how you add it. so make sure the order so zero one zero two zero one one it's three one four one one three one connected to four one connected to three one connected to zero because this is the one three connected to one four connected to one two connected to five two connected to zero if you see this is two connected to zero five connected to two and that is so now let's explore the tree let me suppose g dot uh, explore so what you would say when you explore any tree you would say you start vertex should be zero because you're starting from zero you say okay start from zero and explore the tree for me click run see he first thing he just start from here if you just keep track you say hey start here he done from this one he take it off three first thing he take a three then he go back he take four the second one then he take one that right four three one if you see it here four three uh, three four one then he just go down and then go back tracking take five if you see five then two then zero that's totally correct so this is how it works if you want to search to any element it's really easy just modify the code for explore to doing search and you're done there we done and thank you for watching let me talk about another exploring algorithm named it breath first search so how breath first search work breath first search uses q to track the new that visited so how to work let we do another same graph i have a b c d e and this way f okay that's cool i have a b c d e f that's cool so now think about you are uh, you are in node a and your target is let's suppose your target is tall node e you want to go to E. So how you do that, as we say, it, you, would, you would use Q. So how the Q work? You would say, okay, first let me draw the Q. This is my Q. And this is my element. So yes. First of all, in which node? I'm in A. So add A in the Q. So when A in the Q, say, okay, I'm, I have A in the Q. I will take all the child of A. What child I have? I, I have B and C. I will add them in in order so that's mean I remove a and I add B and C and add a output outside so now I have two pointer B here and C here this rear and this is the front okay so now to take element we'll take the last one for sure B so B which element have have D and E so you say okay I would add D here and E here make sure you remove B because you tested now so now the front hair or the front hair and the rear hair and uh, this is the node you already you want to search for you find it so this is how death fair search work in simple example so what if we want to do another example and we think about it like we want to do a different example I know this is basic example up here to you because there is no more complex operation happen but let me go to the same graph that was a little bit complex you have this one and a three node and have this one these are connected and you have them this way you have s here sorry s here 
and you have A, B, C, and you have D here. So yes, first of all, you will add S. You have two pointer front and rear. So how many child S have? Have three, A, B, C. Let me suppose you are looking for this node, D. Okay, what's a child S have? Have A and have B and have C. So you just take off this one because this one is already visited. Add here one, add another one here. This is the front, this is the rear. Okay, so now, okay, you done with the S, so you are in A. A which child have S and D. S already visited, just add D directory. Okay, and move your pointer rear here, and here you find it. So did you see the way that uh, the breadth of search using to search? The way that breadth of search using to search, when he access to any node, he get all the child for that node. And while in death search, no, when you get any node, you will go to the left one or the last one. And this is the difference between two way. Both of them are same in solution of the graph, but you will use the one that you think is more suitable for your solution or, or more optimal for your solution. Yes, are we done? And thank you for watching and see you next. Hey everybody, let me talk in this video how we do implement for birth search using Java. So to get started this video, make sure you already seen the dev search because I just will copy the code and do some modification. So uh, to get started, I would just create a new class. I would name it uh, birth search. Okay, a graph in this way. Here you go. I just create this class. I will go to the dev search and I will copy all the code that I have it for the dev search from level six to the 949 okay just copy and go here and paste it again the first search again still using uh, adjacent so define array of adjacent and adjacent is the node and this is the node this is you know about it so now you define the size in the constructor again you still initialize your array initialize your size initialize your array then you initialize the element in the array you're done this will not change anything Adding node, you will not change anything. You just create the node, adding to specific index because you're adding to adjacent list, so it will not change in the structure of the adjacent list. Now we just will do modify in this part. And depth first search will change it to birth first search. So birth first search is still using visit and email visited, marked it to visit. Keep this line. This line, I just initialize the visit by false. That's cool. A stack, I will change it here to Q because we would use Q in the in the when we work with birth first search, so Q is part of linked list, so make sure you mention it as a linked list. So a linked list of integer, then you say not push, you add it to the Q. That's cool. You first of all, you just add the element in the Q. Then if the Q, I would suppose should be Q will be better. So if the Q, you added the Q. So if the Q is not empty, what you do, you just first of all, you take the last element in the Q, you say S Q dot pull not push not poop is different structure then you will not return it back you no longer need it so hey i just take it over then i just mark this one is visited make sure when you take it over you print here you say sys or you you could take this line up and just remove this code because you no longer need it and just mark it here as visited you say okay our n or visit node you just mentioned the node that you visited cool then what the next process you will do after you just visit the element you mark it you would say okay this node i mark it as visited true then next process after you mark it as visited you take the head again it's done it's no longer needed because i don't need it's done because i already take the element so while head is not null that's cool while um uh, the head is not null check first of all if this element is visited so if it is false just add it to the queue so it should be a q dot add so q dot add then mark this one as visited is it's done is not needed and v uh, break is not needed because you will not do break and you continue for next 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 and you will continue exploring the your tree and here we done so to do implement for this graph just take this code and say create a new class name it death search demo and finish make sure go to the this one demo and copy of the code because you need to explore same graph in different way just copy this code and better search here you go 
make sure I will not change anything but here I think the graph name here is birth first search but here is birth first search so my graph is birth first search still same node is connected I added node for the graph then do birth first search explore I'm just exploring the birth first search but let me draw the graph again so you will understand what the output so if I just draw it I say uh, how I draw it I say draw tool I suppose this node I have it this node 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay 0 1 2 3 4 5 0 1 2 3 4 5 I have a 0 1 2 3 4 5 and I have all the link here is mentioned it in the same way so yeah let me just run it and see what the output for sure he will first you will visit zero then visit all the child for zero so i visit two and two then the child for one is a three four for sure he visited three four then lastly he visit five yes this is basically what, what we want to show you and here we're done and thank you for watching let me talk in this video about another interesting problem I have been seen with google and ibm job interview which is word break problem it is a very very popular problem for the interviewer to test your background in searching so the, the question looks like this giving a dictionary of words have number of words such as samsung mango man go and whatever number of words you have this is you'll be, you'll be your dictionary of words then a user should input a text without space such as this text and you need to break these words so based on my as i could see if i just uh, look i have her word name it samsung and i could find it in the uh, dictionary i have another word and i could find it in dictionary and i have mango as a complete word and mango also could be a two different words which is man this is the man and go this is the go so now we need to find a way to find or to break down the string to number of words for example for this string will be look like this i get a word uh, samsung and mango so i will what i will do is just do better search because I first create a queue and the queue I put first character in the queue uh, first take first character see if this character in the dictionary if it not make to make them two characters search them in the dictionary not continue for example I find eight characters or whatever seven I find it as a word in the dictionary so I change them to some song and add space then I search for I'll track the index for example I'm in this index then after that I put this one in the queue then I say okay let me search is A in the queue no is A N in the queue is A N D in the queue yet I added I A N D then add space then mango I just said is M, M in the queue is M, M A in the queue is N in the queue yes man in the queue I added as a man okay but also if I try another try M A N G O mango also in the queue so there's two possible man go and check i'm done um if i'm in man here i could search for geo geo on the qs yes, man go so i have two possible scenarios either samsung and mango or samsung and man space go as as i told you like all that you need to use is uh birth first search or i think their first search also work because you just need to track you see search for first second there and then you track the word and you track the index word and index see here your your here every time you put one one word one word here you put two words in the queue either mango completely or man and mango is done man you pull it back and you find a word go so to solve this problem in coding i will just go here and my clips and you create a problem 17 so i will say com package com dot problem 17 okay 
Now from 17, I will create a new class and I will create the constructor and public method and I will name it word break because I want to break words. Okay. And see, I have this is my constructor. So when someone create the constructor, I want just to do the dictionary. I have the dictionary ready here. So now I just try to uh, write my code. So for me to write my code, I will just define a method. And my method, let me just increase this. Avoid. And I will name it uh, break uh, word now okay then that is it's just a method break word now it should be called after someone create instance from this so for example if i just say okay i want to call this class dot uh, break word now i supposed to be sending some text like for example i send i like samsung and man go okay so let me see what I will get here. I would assume this method will get suturing as input, which is word. And I am I am I should be responsible to break this word. As I said, I should first define my queue in this way. Oh, queue. And the queue should take something name it option. Option is just for me is a class. Okay? And I will define it in a second. Okay, Q new instance of what? Of link list of option. And option is a class. I should track two things in it. One of them is the word, and the second one is uh, one of them is the word index, and the second one is the um, string. So I would just define here class. I name it option. I don't know why I name it option. So two index. One of them is next index, which is the next index in the string. And uh, another one should be supposed to be. I could call it um, array list maybe. Yeah, array, array list is better. So I would define it array list. Array list of string. And I would name it list of words will be equal and you understand so array list of string okay then public option and public option will take two instance first of them is this one so and the second one is list of words as input uh, remember uh, here I have two options because I first of all I say okay this dot next because I am tracking the next character cool next index whatever next index is and also I want to add, add whatever list of words dot add whatever list of words so I would say add all list of words don't say a call because Java reference so you don't want to send by reference, so you don't want to use this and you break everything. So if you just say oh cool here, you'll break everything because Java sent by reference and you will one queue will break another queue. So it's very good practice in Java. Whenever you have something you just in uh, array list you just define it or initialize in your class. So I have this is my option class. So I suppose I track two things, the index and list of force. So as a start for my uh, a start for my queue, I would start with dot add, and this one should be two things: the index started with zero, index what index zero because I have nothing yet now, and the second one is a new array list because as a start I just say okay I don't have any information for now, so it's just empty I don't know anything anything right now have no information so just everything is empty now i will start my queue so okay i say okay while 
my q dot is not empty i want to do this loop so so what i will do first of all i define my option oh cool what q dot pull i just pull the last element i pull the last element in the in the q which is whatever the word is so i would stop when when the option dot next character greater than or equal wordless so if i just greater than or equal wordless length that's mean i'm done i just print it please so here i just need to say a printer print option dot list of words giving that that's mean okay if you reach if he was able to break all the words and i reach the last place here uh, in the in the index i'm here my index is here now no more words so i was able to break all the words so please print the rest of the words you have it okay and you could continue if, if you say break that's mean it will print only one if you don't say break if you do, if you say here break or to print only one if you don't say break it will print all possible combinations of words so then okay now what i should do what I will do is not hard. I say, okay, I did for loop. Integer i equals zero. I less than the word dot length because I'm going uh, word by word. Then i plus plus. So I say here. Well, I don't start my index from zero. Just just to make it clear because I don't want to do it. If I don't want to start from zero here uh, in this solution because i want every time start from the last index so if i was here i start with zero if i was here i start from six if i start here whatever so i was i will make sure here i will start from the option index so i will say option uh oh language changing option dot next then I say whatever continue so I will start from the option so if, if, if the element I pull it is here so I will give him that index whatever it is 20 25 so it will be able to break mango or to whatever now I will start what I get a substring I say single possible one word this is I I would assume is oh I say name it one word one word will be equal to what word dot substring from what i would substring it from the option dot index that's mean where i am next index to i so the last element is i so, so for example if i is here on index zero so from zero for example this one zero so from zero to zero here is one from one to one one to two one to three one to four one to five for example okay so i get one word now i just want to make sure that, is this word in the dictionary every time i try it is this word in the dictionary so i say if the dictionary dot contain those words if it yes that's mean yeah that's good we have this one in the dictionary now i could just consider this one as a word and go to the next so if how i could do that so i need to define my option new option i don't know why i name it option it's a very ugly name but it is what it is so what's the next index i'm going to is i what's the list of character words is option dot list of words whatever i have and beside that i will add one more word to it which is the new word how i do that i could do it in different way i could just say okay uh, this element it is public so I say, okay this one is public so public list of words so now here i'm able to say option dot uh, list of character dot add and add the uh, one word or I could do it in many different ways. Then I just add it to the queue. Which is a new option. Okay. 
an option and I don't like it. And that is, I don't think you need to do anything else. So I just save it, let me see. I just be able to break these words or or not. So giving that run. Mm -mm. So nothing printed because of I don't know because of what so I just Q I just pull it if this one is greater than a local word length hmm break it so now now I just want to do debug to see why this code is not working so I just put here option and I say okay please debug this one for me switch now I'm here this word I will just step I'm here in the queue so my queue is linked list of options okay step into I say step over now my option here is zero with empty okay if you rather than just end if not just go here then now I will start from I pull zero I less than the word length I plus plus that's good is it is zero contained in this dictionary what's the was this dictionary why I don't see the dictionary here dictionary here is, seems to me no I could see this dictionary has number of words so step over So is if this one is containing single word? So I now I should be in the dictionary. Yep. Now it's added. A new option. Added in the queue. Then continue. C I L I L and we'll continue. I like this is not word is not there so it will end up by it will just uh, it will continue until it reaches the second one so I just add a breakpoint here so make sure you say next so now I'm the next so now this is my option I have not run it this one yet so now the option should have I and index start with one that's good so as a list I have I only and index start one yes so i would just go here so from one so one to uh then two so now i have like so like supposed to be in the dictionary okay add it that's good then now i have two words I don't know what's, what's wrong here now. Here I have I like, I'm at, and then I'm in, at index 5. For some reason, it's not printing it. Uh oh. For some reason, I never reach the next index, is never reach the end of the citric. Let me just step a few seconds and come back. Okay, I didn't find anything wrong, only this one it should be less than or equal. Why? Because I always want to cover the last character in the string. Because the substring consider the last character is where you are. Just write about substring. Always this one will not be considered because I'm not including it. So let me just change it to less than or equal. So now if I just run it. See the possible. I like Samsung and Mango. I like Samsung and Mango. I like something, some song and Mango. See how many options. I like Samsung and Mango. So four possible options. Yeah, we did it. So if you like this video, don't forget to do subscribe for the channel and share for this video. Thank for watching and see you next. Did you talk in this video about backtracking concept?
So backtracking mean you go to case, then you go back again to previous case, then you continue again. You would see it clear when you explore the tree using depth first search. For example, this tree, when you explore it, if I say I have A, B, C, D, E, F. So you see when you explore this tree using depth first search, depth first search, you just start from this node, then you continue, then you, you went back. Then you had some backtracking and you went back here, then you continue your search for next. So this this point here that if you focus on it, this point name it backtracking because you went to specific case and you, you went to, to case like D, then you went back. So you, you use the stack. So I really, really encourage you when you work with any backdrawing problem, you use uh, this uh, this status like uh, using stack. So there is many problem could be solved using backtracking. I would show you like A to queen. You know what we mean by A to queen. If I just take this one, this case, and uh, this case, you know A to queen there is mean there is A to queen in the in the area that's mean it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Should be also there is eight rows. Okay, or oh, three, four, five, six, and you have seven and eight. So yeah, this is a to queen area. That's mean when I talk about a to queen, I mean hey, when I add one queen here, let suppose this is a queen in this color. So, you any other queen when you add it should not be called by this queen. That's mean this queen will call any other queen sitting here or sitting, if I'm not mistake, sitting here or sitting in this line because this this is how queen working. Okay. So you cannot add any other queen here. For example, if I on second queen, I would add second queen here. Okay, and this queen also call any queen who's sitting in this line and any queen who sit here or any queen who sit in this line. So you have to arrange all your queen without calling any other. For example, also this one call this line. We know that and this one also call this line. This is just how, how you play the game, which is game. So for example, you could add third queen here and you continue. So when I ask you to add a to queen in this place, how you would add, add them? So you would say, okay, I add one here. I try to add second one here, for example. Uh, for example, you say, okay, I would add first one here. I would try add second one here. No, I cannot add it here. No, I cannot. No, you will add it here. Then you try to add third one. You try here. You cannot here. You cannot here. You cannot here. You cannot here. You could add it. Then you continue the four one. You say, okay, could I add it here? Because this one now, if I just look through this one, this one will call anyone here, anyone living here, anyone living also here. You say, hey, could I add the new queen here? No, no. Yes, here I could add it. Yes, I could add. You you would add the new queen here. But you suppose it in this color. So yes, you continue. In some cases, you would not able to add the queen in any place because it could be it would be called by all the other queen for example if i just try to just say this one this one will call all this line all this line and all this line so in some cases for example in this line you could not you would in this if you want to add another queen you could say okay in this line i would add another queen here i cannot here i cannot here i, cannot, here I could add a queen so i would add a new queen here in this way but this a queen will be added in this he will call anyone here anyone here anyone here so now when you try to add other queen in this line you cannot add it because 
to be colored in any place so now you have to do backtracking what i mean by doing backtracking you try to add this one in other place maybe you would add it here so you just move this queen from this place you take it over say no this i could move it and move it in this place a new place now you good you will go forward you say try okay let me try to add this queen again you i may find other place for it so if i just remove this one this is really and you say okay yes i at least maybe i find a place to put my new queen hopefully this one will call her oh there's too many yeah this is the idea behind the game the the, the game is when you try to add a queen you try to add it then if you have any problem you go back and try to change the queen's place Chen going back and changing queen place and then going forward this what name it backtracking to so to solve this problem you have to use a stack that's mean hey um i'm specific it i'm in specific it a specific case i'm adding myself for example in a stack then a second one in the stack third one in the stack then i when i say hey third queen i cannot add it so let me take it over then i let me check uh, for example this is the state I try to add it to another place so i could move it yes this is the idea behind how you could or how backtracking work i'm sure you see it in the code previously and you see it in the implementation so yes, this is how backtracking, you'll see a lot of problems with backtracking. Whenever you have backtracking problem, just use same concept that you used in the depth research. Thank you for watching and see you next. Let's talk in this video about two interesting process. One of them named pre-order and post-order or post-fix and prefix. So oh, how we could solve a problem with post-fix and prefix really easy if i say pre-order that's mean if i just start from the root any node i reach it i have to mention so now i am in a i mentioned a then i reach b i mention b then i reach c d i mention d then i go i mean i reach this e i mention e then i mean i reach c i mention c then i reach f i mention f this is named to pre-order okay that's mean pre-order or in fact to post post fix okay now we talk about uh, post order or prefix prefix is just different little bit say okay i will mention the node after i pass it so that means i will not mention the node now i will not mention it now i pass d so i will mention d now i pass e i will mention e i pass it b i mention b now i still do not pass anyone i pass it f i mention f i pass it c i mention c i pass it a i mention a this is expression like post order okay okay and this post fix and a prefix this is how how you could just organize in your data i want to show you something if i say 3 plus 10 minus 11 plus 12 okay let me suppose multiply if you see where is the most interesting operation or who is the main op process here it's multiplication so you add multi multiplication and you have something in the left on the right and something in the left let's go to the left or to the right what i have here addition i say plus what i have here i have 11 and here i have two if you see any node will be the operation while the and will be the numbers so what i have here also i have operation plus i will add a plus here in this way i will say plus between a three and ten okay now write pre-order you say okay multiplication addition three ten uh, plus eleven two this is a pre-order let me suppose how we write it in post order. Say three, then ten, then plus, then you say eleven, then two, then plus, then multiplication. This is basically how you how you do the operation. There is many 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 processes you could do it. For example, three plus two all these multiply by uh, 
the three multiply by uh, two over one just simple operation so who is the main process here is multiplication who is in the left side plus operation between three and two with the right side you have two things I have main process here is multiplication between three and other this is two bracket division between two and one okay now just try to see if you see the main node will be the process and you could also do pre and post order here we done thank you for watching let me talk in the video about specific to problem I think you are maybe interesting to solve this homework okay think about you are visiting number of cities so you now want to visit number of cities this is the cities the city A this city B this city C this city D every city have specific weather like for for first day this have sunny for the second day cloud third day sunny and continue what about second day second city same thing have sunny sunny for example sunny this one have to have sunny go to cloud and have sunny sunny for example and this one have a cloud 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 and sunny the idea is you go to first city and you stay in it if it is sunny and then you go to the next city is if it's sunny if it's not sunny you have to stay in your cities but your city have to be sunny to stay in it so maybe you stay two days here then you stay one day here then what two day here then three day here make sure when you visit any city this city have to be sunny if it's not sunny you cannot visit to visit that city you have to stay in your city but keep your mind you cannot stay in your city if it is not sunny so think about the solution of, of this problem and how you could solve this problem and how you could say hey if you could visit this cities if you say hey you cannot visit because the city is the weather is not good so yes think about it and uh, pass the video now do you pass it cool so let me give you a hint if you see the cities so what do you think about it number of cities every city have a specific weather the solution for this problem is using bag tracking you just using a stack like like depth first search well, and you move you keep in the sun you stay in the city and you go to the next city but make sure you cannot go back you go to the next city if it's sunny you could go to, in the second day if not you would stay there for the second day then you go next next you maybe stay here and you find hey the city is not sunny in this day but maybe I have previous city another day sunny so I would go back here maybe you stay for another day then you go next then you continue so this problem could be solved by backtracking so think about it think well uh, thank you for watching come let me talk in this video about trip planner I got this question with Google on site interview the question look like this you have six cities or you want to visit six cities and you have a nine days of vacations you could or you want to visit the cities only when the weather is sunny so I represent the sunny weather by this color and the red color represent the bad weather let's suppose training so you want to visit the cities only when the weather is sunny and you have nine days you want to know how many days you have to stay in every cities to complete or you to through your vacation however you could stay in one city in one city multiple days if you want to there's a possible to stay multiple days but you cannot stay in the city if the weather is raining so for example if I take this direction so on day first day, day number one I went to this city then second day I went to this city and the third day I went to this city fourth day this city five day this city so now could I go to another city in six days no I cannot because the weather here is, is raining so this trip is failing I cannot do this trip I cannot I cannot stay one day in every city so let, let me try the second one 
so on the second try I just let me do it in different color so I stay in the first city one day second city one day two days three days I stayed in this city and then I went to the uh, city number three city number four then I said another day in city number four city number five city number six so this is successful I was able to stay how many days so one one of the city number two I stayed three days uh, city number four I stayed two days while other cities I stayed only one day so this this type of travel was successful the first one was failing so your goal or you should you should write a program to tell or the output of the program telling the user if he could do vacation and tell him how many days should stay in every city for example the output will be for this case say you will stay one day in city number one three days in city number two one day in three two days in four one day in five one day in six and if it doesn't find a path or let's find a vacation like if there is no if this one is for example also raining so it will tell you hey you cannot do vacation because you cannot visit all the cities you should be able to visit all the cities so the question is not that hard just look through it it's very very similar to question number one or problem number one well, what we need to do here we still do breakfast search but every at every city whenever we go we need to track the row number which is the, the grid the column number beside that I need to track how many days I stayed in in every other cities for example in this point I say I stayed in one day in in city number one okay I could just write number one and that is so when it go here it will tell him hey you stayed one day in city number one two two uh, two that's mean stayed one day in city number one three days in city number two and that is still breakfast set very easy problem you put it in the queue and you just track it but one more thing here in this case we could travel in two direction because you don't have four direction travel we could travel other if I am here I could travel stay in my city so I mean I could go down or I could go in this direction I cannot go in this way I cannot go that way I cannot go this way so either I increase the number of uh, rows I plus one or I increase both row by one and column by one so i plus one and j plus one okay that's my cases so what i will do i will use the previous example i have it with some modification to get into uh, the solution so i would go just back and try to implement my code so if you remember coding interview i have uh, this was problem number one i could do uh, com another package i, I name it com dot prob number two okay so in the cell I could just uh, copy same class control C control V here this is the cell but here I would not name it cell I would name it uh, because you cannot have two classes in the same name in any project so I would name it a grid cell maybe maybe G cell G cell but in this case, instead of the distance, I want to have array list. Okay, I have array. Sorry, I have array list of integer. You could just say, I need to have array list of integer, and name it list of cities, or list list of visited cities, whatever. Okay and i make sure whenever anyone do initialization i would say this one dot equal and you initialize it so because first one i make sure i initialize it i also may i ex would expect people when they create this class they send the third parameter here as a list of cities so if they send information that's mean if this one is not null I would expect add everything they send it to me so I say this dot the list of cities dot add all because I need to add all the cities that visited before because the previous one may he may visit five cities 
so I need to add all the cities that the previous one visit before it come to the place where I am so uh, here name it gcity it's better to just say gcity just go here and, <laughs> and refactor it just say refactor rename I name it gcity and it will be able to do both of them okay that's good so I have a gcity and I think I'm good so now every row or wherever I go I track the row number column numbers I create cities or list of cities and what I will do I add the previous visitor cities what I mean by that I mean like if he come to to this cell so definitely I could I could I should get the array list of the previous visitor cells which is this one and I put them in, in my list okay so I need to have array list of visited cities so that is that's what I need to do and uh, same thing uh, the short path I just copy that file also and paste it here but there here I could refactor it and I rename it in my problem I rename it here uh, the trip planner trip planner okay and finish yes please so if I go here there's some fixes because here I need to make my, the grid I suppose the grid have six one two three four five six I f it will take me sometimes to to design the grid in this way and similar to this way but let me just do the happy path so the first one this be sunny in this one this one the second one this one the se uh, third this one uh, fourth day and this one fifth day so I don't have zeros I have only zeros and one what I did in this code I say okay based on the problem I have it whenever the weather is raining I will represent the raining by zero when the weather the sunny I represent the sunny by one so I have an array of zeros of one, but here the example have only how many cities? One, two, three, four, five, five. We will fix it later and make it six. So again, I still have a Q, but here Q, Q of G cell. And here when I need to move, the first one, I need to move them to location number zero, zero, which is the first one in the Q. Again, here is G cell. And what I will do, I make sure the move is still in the grid nothing outside that's good so nothing no no problem whenever I go to new cell I would expect I get array list of what array list same thing what I have G cell I would expect I get this the previous visit cities I just get them as input so instead of getting I just get array list of the visit cities also the previous visit city so what I will do, I say, okay, my queue, please add G cell with the uh, previous visitor cities. But in this one, before I add it, I need to make sure to do one more thing. I need to create it as a new instance. So I say G cell this way, and I will tell you why. Uh, a new location, I name it. Oh, cool. Control V. I just first create the instance and I make sure add my cell to it I mean you know what you may not need this you may not need this because I always I need whenever I go I need just add my cell also so all what I need to do instead doing this a crazy thing let me do it fix it indifferently this one is visit zero one and if it how I now if I go the uh, if there is one I'm visiting that's good if it well how I now when I should stop I would say I would stop when uh, whenever the row on column has a cool one which is mean the last cell I am in and the row on the column is the last one in the in the in the in the grid so that's mean the row dot length equal this one I mean I mean in the last column just in the last column make sure the column is the last column because I need to make sure I be able to visit the last one so I need to make sure this one is equal equal 
the grid minus one. What I mean by that, I would stop only if I am in the last cell or in the last column, I'm in this line, in this line, and I have one because I should get here with one to stop. Otherwise, I cannot stop. And in this case, you just print whatever you have it in the in the array list, which is, I think this one that we just if we just printed here, we will we will do some fixes. I'm sure there is there is simple issues we need to fix. But one more thing happened here. I am beside I am adding the previous cities when previous visited cities. What I want to do, I want to add my cell also. So I also say, okay, yeah. I am in this a previous city is visited and beside that I want to add my cell so I say add how I know which cell I am which is mean the column number whatever the column index I am in okay what I mean by that I mean by that is this like if you are coming from like you have in, you have you are you coming to this cell so you already visited three one you visit two one one two two you want to add two again so you need to add it even the first time when you just come here you need to add one in the in the list so this one should be added all the time you all the time track your location in the column okay that's good and now in my movement i don't move in four directions oh boy i move only in two directions so let me remove two of these i could remove uh, I, I could move so this one g cell is not cell and I could move only to the down and I could move only to the right only so in the down to go in the down I should increase the row by one okay and I should send whatever uh, whatever uh, list of cities I visited and when I move right that's mean that both of them cell index and column index should go by one and still i'm visiting this cities because you know i have here in this case i have only two moves and the rest they stay as they are there is nothing changes here i i see there is something wrong because here you see and i send zero i could send as null as start point i say okay as start point set me now so first location will be hey go to zero zero with null so he will go here check it inside the grid does it have one yes add it so what we'll do just go here it's check which row which index cities this one is null doesn't visit the previous city before so it won't do anything here it will add only number one to this index then it's go 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 until it have everything been made so i think by now how does the print i don't change anymore and the rest will stay as they are so i would just run it to see if i just get a visit so he say there is no path he said he was not able to find path basically well, he's not able to find path i should be able to stop when the new row you are in a new column call column then minus one hmm see and here here we may have simple bag we need to track so to track this bag because here we have using we are using a queue so it's a bit hard to track it so i would just print whenever whenever it pull the element so here i just try to print this one let me just we just print it to see where is the bag dot column index uh, dot row index okay to see what what cells visited and when it gets stopped because i have may have a simple bag i miss in the output hmm should be able to find the path but i think i did some pull mistake here so if i find it this should be if else the opposite so this one should be the real one the else will be i'm adding it if i just find the location so if i find the location and my greater cool one so that's mean i'm done there's this is the city that i'm looking for otherwise just add it in the queue let me just rerun it and see if i be able to save it see zero one two three he did not mention four but he could just say 
just add one city here because because you need just to add the last the last city you visit here so add you need just add the new column the last cities or your current city you are in and you should be good to go so now if i just rerun it so i visit city 0 1 2 3 4 that's right 0 1 2 3 4 what if i have uh, still i have four cities i didn't change anything so this one i still have another city but I still visiting that city in the last day I mean if I just run it I want to tell you what I want to do so this is the city I visited last day I would assume this city I should stay two days in them but this one is not one so this city is not one anymore so if I just put a zero I'm not able to go is that right because uh, no path found and you no longer no i print this one uh, no path found because uh oh uh oh I, I i i removed the wrong one i need to remove this one okay so i just click right again and bang so now no path found because i can i go here one day second day third day fourth day I cannot go here anymore so for the I'm done so I would assume I want to stay here another day or one two three four and I cannot go so in this city I need to stay two days before I go here so previous city I need to stay two days this way so there's a path now you should have printed to me See, you say 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. That's right. So here, he come at this city. He stay one day, then another city one day. He stayed 3, 4, 2 days, or 2, 2, 2 days. Then he stayed in 3 one day, and the 4 one day to be able to go this direction. Okay, so that's the one, that's the one, so cool. So yeah, that is, that's how to solve it. See, I didn't change a lot, simple thing here and there. So how are we done? Thank you for watching, I'll see you next. Welcome. Let me talk in this video about the first problem, which is find the shortest path. The problem will be look like this. Giving a two dimension array, you have your robot could be in any cell. In this case, it is in the top left corner and you have a target which is this we assume a post office and also this one could be in any cell you need to find the shortest path between the robot and the target the shortest path because there may be more than one path could take you to the uh, post office however the robot only could travel through the cells that has once if the cell has zero that robot cannot move through them consider a zero zero is like a walls so a robot cannot move it could only move through once so in this case in this example the robot will move this way the cell then this cell then this then this then this then this then this one until it reaches the direction the destination so giving this example the robot the robot could have a four direction movement it could move to the left it could move to the right it could move to the top it could move to the bottom okay that's good so now you have all these requirements so now all the requirements are clear you may just look through the problem you say how we could solve this problem how we could find the shortest path between the robot and the post office and there may be more than one path between these two the first solution jumped to my mind is using bare first search Bare first search, it is algorithm used, could be used for th to scan things, to search for things, search for possible paths. If you don't know what bare first search, I will add a tutorial. I have it uh, comp for the for the fundamental of destruction algorithm. I will add you a link 
uh, under this video you could go and take that course it's really complete course talk about perfect search and this course we focus on what's the problem how it could be solved and how we could write the code for it so first choice or first choice for this problem is we will use perfect search the second I will say when we visit cell one time we don't visit that cell again so if I scan this cell by any way how I don't scan it again so I make sure I put a flag for that cell so I will not scan that cell again and that is you will be able to find the shortest path easily so let's get started and try to code this one step by step so I will just go and open Eclipse in my case here I would use a Java to code this problem you could use any program language everyone have his preferred language to work on for me I would like to use Java because it's my favorite so I will create a new project it will hold all my um, problems so I would name it uh, coding interviews okay and I would say next and net finish so create make sure create path and that is I don't know why he created this one I don't care about this model let me just this is something in you with with Java I don't need this model so for first of problem I will click right create a new package and I will name it com dot problem one because this is for problem every problem will have its own package so my class or my class should be name it nah you can name it any name I would name it or short path okay this is my name of the my name the name of my class and I make sure create a my uh, public method main method and boom here I am and I could write my code here any way I want so in my definition we said I have two dimension array so I think you have a, think about you having a grid with two dimension array and this array should be two dimension as I told you so it should be a two dimension and have multiples um, rows so first one will have let me make it similar to the one we have in that example so it should be one 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 zero then the second one the second row will be zero 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 one zero then the third row will be I think it's zero zero uh, one one zero then the last row will be I don't remember but it should be zero zero when the post office zero so it should be zero zero when the post office and zero so the post office I would give it specific code so I would let me say that we give we give uh, Z nine for post office you could give anything because we have zero already reserved for the cells that the robot cannot move on once reserved for the robot the cells for the robot can move in so I would give nine to the uh, post office location okay and bam I think I'm good now if you think about the problem how this problem could be solved whenever we go through any location what we need to do in our preferred search whenever I when I go to this location for example I need to track in my queue in preferred search I need to track the row index I need to track the column index I need to track the distance the distance of from the robot like how many steps the robot did walk so in this case it walk only one step for example here still I have the row index column index and the distance which is in this case 2 and this one the robot uh, I, I track the row index I track the column index and the distance which is 3 so in every cell or for every movement I track three things the row the column and the how many steps the robot did move so because of this I need to have a class so I would name my new class I would name it M cell maybe and you could I could create my constructor 
in this case, empty constructor. So I have three things in this class. I have public row index, and I have public, and should, in this case, public integer row index, and I have public integer column index, and I have public integer uh, distance. How you name it? Steps. Whatever. Distance. Distance. Okay, three three information. At least three information. I could say it should be part from the constructor because I would assume someone will send me this. I don't know about them, but someone should send me this three information to my constructor when I add them in my queue. So this inf three information should be given to me whenever I go. So I say this, do this. I wish in Java you could use a data class, but I think they still did not implement this. Because they make my my the tool make my life easy, or easier than what I have it here. And same thing for the third one, bum bum bum. So three things I needed to track for every case for every cell. Whenever I go, I should track these three information: the row index, column index, and the distance. Good. Now go back. When we, whenever we implement data search, we need to have a queue. So I would say, okay, I will have a queue in Java. The nice things they have already queue. So you could just say queue, control space, import it. It's part of from queue. It should be my cell or the my cell or the cell should be part of the cell and should be new in instance of it should be linkless here. Why? Uh, don't tell me why. This is how Java the interface the, the queue is not implementation, the linkless is the implementation for the uh, a queue, so you need to link it list. You need to have link list to implement any queue. So this is my queue. And the queue whenever I go. And because we are dealing with buffer search, so I would assume in every cell I have four locations. But I need to define my movements. So here I will define my void move. And this void move should be like how the object could move. I would have multiple things. First of all, integer, the grid, because the object or the robot could move it through the grid. It should have the queue as input. So because it is, I need always to add or read from that queue. I need to see whenever I move in any place, I need to get the new row I need to go to. I need to get the new column. I need also to get the new distance. So whenever you tell me move, I say, okay, what, where, is that, where I'm moving and the cost and everything. First thing you need to make sure from, you need to make sure your movement is inside the grid. You don't want your robot to go outside the grid. What I mean by that, I mean like looking to the example that you have it. I don't know why this computer takes too, too much time to do something. I need to make sure my robot is in this boundary. I don't want the robot to go outside. So always the row should be between zero and the lane and the column between zero and the lane. So I don't want the robot to go outside. Okay, good. So in this case, I would say, okay, I need to make sure, make sure the robot in the grid. So to make sure I have four conditions to check the row or the new row should be always greater than or equal zero and the new row should be less than the grid dot length you say why length because if i have two dimension array the grid dot length will represent the number of rows so should be less than the number of rows and i have two more condition a new column should be as i said greater than or equal zero and the new column it should be uh, less than the grid dot length but in this case i'm not getting the length because the length here give me the number of rows i in number of column i could get the number of column from any row i could get it from number zero because supposed to have all the rows other columns similar so I could get them from 
row number zero from number two number one number two it's prefer number zero because i would assume from the first row because if i don't i don't want to put row number four then the array doesn't have four rows and i have a crash out of memory so one zero is good so this line of code will make sure always your robot is moving inside the inside your boundary now if it in the boundary what i will do i need to make sure first of all the grid for the new row okay uh, in this a new row and the new column who should be if it equal equal if it equal equal one that's mean I could move it through this cell okay that's mean it's possible for me to move so if, if I'm allowed to move through this cell what I will do I'll first of all I just add this one as a new cell but this new cell will expect three different parameters. If you remember that class, you expect three things. The row index, column index, and the distance. Okay. I would place row index, new row, a new column, and the a new distance. Okay. This is three information. I pass them to my queue. Whenever I go to any location, I need to track these three things. Also, as I... Rem as I said in the beginning any row i visit or any cell i visit i make sure no one else will visit this cell again so just set it for example to minus one so if you set to minus one you would assume no one could visit the cell again because here you check only for one this is first condition else if what if the the cell is the one that i'm searching for so that means the cell is equal equal nine it is where is the post office located okay that's mean i found what i want i just want to print I would say distance then I just say plus whatever new distance is okay I'm just getting whatever new distance I'm done and it's better to just say just dot exit because I don't want to exit I don't want to stay after I find what I want just exit please don't don't continue okay and that is that's what you need to do now what I want to do I just implement my method that responsible for move I make sure always the move inside the grid if it's a cool one that means i could move so if i could move i add it in the queue and set it as a visit cell so no one cell is visited so no one could visit the cell again and if it's a cool nine that's mean that's the post office i found it solution found solution or path is found path is found you could say path is found here and distance whatever so now it's good. I think all the implementation now is good. I don't have any issue now. I just need to do some some more changes. First of all, I need to set my uh, startup point. So where is the robot? As you see in the example, the robot in the top left corner. So which is in the cell number zero zero. You could put it anywhere. So you set robot location. As I told you, I would assume I'm putting it in the zero zero. So I would say move first of all i say move i need to pass multiple thing uh grid q and i say i will it will be in the first location and the movement is zero this is based on the interviewer if the interviewer tell you no i want it in cell number uh, row number three column number two here is where my, your robot located it's fine do whatever you want for me i just won't say it cell zero i start with zero zero and see, you cannot access to this method because it's not static. So let me make it static. Okay, so I'll be able to access to it. So now I set my robot. After I set it, I make sure I do my buffer search. So I, what I do, I say, okay, while the queue is not in pity, dot is in pity, is not in pity, I just do my four movements. So there's four movements I could do. I could do to the left, I could do, do to the right. I could to do, do movement to the top and I could do movement to bottom okay so first of all I need to get the cell where I am so I say both cell I start point you now the first cell is zero zero so you just say Q dot pull pull oh dot pull so for the first run because First one, I put in the Q00, so the first call is zero. 
So I need to move it. I say, okay, please move it to to the left. So the left does mean I will pass the grid, I will pass the queue, I will pass boot dot to the left. So it will be dot row index minus one because I want to try to the left and this one should be outside of the grid so it will not be able to move. So call index, I need to pass it same as it is. And the distance will be plus one because whenever I go to any location, I add one to it. So guess what? If I'm location zero, zero, so this one will be minus one and minus one outside of the boundary so it will not be taken at the first try. Move to the right. What I will do, I'm just increasing this one by one instead minus one. Move to the top. I don't touch the row. I touch only the column. So I'm going up. So that's mean minus one. And move to the bottom. I'm just increasing by one. And bam, we'll set. I just run it, and I should be able to, or the code should be able to tell me what the distance. Tell me distance is six. The path from one, distance six. So uh, why distance is six? Why we don't just print it and make sure like we could do and print it? Let me print so to show you like how the array look like just in case so I would say I have a static void print for my integer integer a grid and you just think about just a printing to dimension array it's very simple so you have for loop integer i equal zero i less than uh, grid dot length dot length and then i plus plus same thing you have it for j for integer j equal zero j less than a grid as i told you for zero dot length uh, j plus plus and then you just print it any element so you say okay please print whatever you want you say a grid for i and j it's better to format it give one space and whenever you go around new line you just say okay so i s and nothing I just print so what I need to do is just here I just want to print it I don't do I don't did anything I just after I create this one just print it I want to show you how how this grid look like okay so going back running it I wish everything will run bum 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 it tell it did not ah, print I printed as a line so I just remove this one so it will not print it as a line now this time don't tell me this uh oh not this one sorry not this this is not what i'm looking for i am looking for this one so now it's just run hit see now the path he says six let me see one two three four five six that's good because there was a path here between this one and this one this is what we did and I don't think this same size because this one four by five is not it's not five by five it's just four by five so the one that you have it here I think was see zero one zero zero one 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 zero uh, one 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 zero yeah there was there's supposed to be another row so i could i could just add one one add another row just to make it similar to the example so just one zero you see like do we get same what we have there i just add another row so nine so now because we'll move one two three four five six seven eight nine that's good nine steps yeah, nine steps, and that is, that's correct. This was the question that I got it in, in Amazon. That's how to be solved. In Microsoft, they just give me the same problem, but they told me, no, you don't have one post office. You may have multiple post offices, like this one, instead of this one, there may be another post office here, and you require to return the, sh the nearest post office. I don't think I will change anything in the code now. I just add post office there. So I say, okay. This line should have a post office, 
so that's mean they are supposed to be here another post office so now the the longest one is nine if you remember or the farthest one is nine so i suppose to be the other one is shortest eight because when it come here three four five six seven this one eight is the nearest one while this one nine okay so definitely is correct so see the solution is still same they just phrase the problem differently two different company but the solution is 100 same i didn't change anything in the code still bit first search still i'm looking searching in the and in the inside the grid and that is so whenever you get any question related to the uh, searching in in the two dimension array try to find shortest path this is your solution this is your pseudo code just remember how you move and remember this part this part you will you will always using it this part like uh, like at this part how you move between cell how you make sure you are on the grid how you make sure when you find it you set it because like what if there is what if there is no what if there is no post office there I would assume if there is no post office I will print no post office here I say no uh, path phone maybe there is no path phone I cannot find path for some reason for some reason this one was zero uh, there was not a path to nine. Yeah, there was a post office, but there is no path. It should tell me there is no path. See, no path found because yeah, he come here, he reach here, but cannot find path to nine. So yep, yeah, that is that's what you need to do. So if you talk with the interviewer, ask him about the path, talk with him about uh, what is the possibility if there is no path, what you should do, what if there is possibility multiple post office, and yeah, you should be all set. So how are you done? Thank you for watching and see you and Hey everybody, let me talk in this video about a real world problem that we could apply a bit death per search or breath per search on it to fit, to solve it. So this question is, came to me, especially when I was interviewing one of the big companies around the world. So that company, they was really, really interested in algorithm. So they asked me this question. The question was this, you have two dimensional, right? And you have a post offices. If you see every cell color represent specific post office. So this post office, this post office, this post office, this post office. You have to fill all these empty, empty uh, cells with a nearest post office. So for example, if I think about this cell, which one, one nearest near post office is this one. So when I move from one cell to cell, how much will be the cost? One. So I would say, hey, this is one because it is uh, how much it uh, distance for it for from this one, how many? It's one, two, three. Like I have to do one, two, sorry, one, two, three. Do you see? So that's all. You have. Uh, I didn't tell one thing. One of the rules that you have to know about it is this: you, if if you want to move, you have two four movement, either right or left. They are right or top or bottom. You cannot move this way or this way. This is not allowed. So this is the basic rule. So you cannot move this way or this way or this way. So if you are on this cell, uh, you cannot move this way or you cannot move this way. This is doesn't doesn't work with this uh, this this a problem. So let me start solving all the cells just to show you. So which what is the nearest one to this one to this cell? If I move here one. What about this one? If I try to do one two, so here's two. What about this one? One. What about this one? I would say one two. Okay. What about this one? One two three. Or from this way one two three. What about this one? One two three. What about this one? One two three four. Or one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So four both will be four. So what about this one? It is one. What about this one? Two. You just now understand. What about this one? One, two. What about this one? Should be one, two, three. What about this upside down? So let me see which one is nearest to it. If I come from here, I say one, two, three. That's three. If I came from this way, one, two, three. Same thing. One, two, three, one, two, three. So I select any one of them. Select the three. What about this one? I would say one, two, three, four. That's great. What about other? So uh, what about the cell? Which one is nearest to it? If I came from this way, I would say one, two. If 
I came from this way, I would say one, two. So a two for both. What about this one? If I came from this way, so I would came from this way, for example, uh, one, two, three. So here three. If I came from this way, one. So I would select this way because it is, it is the nearest one. So I would say this one, one. What about this cell, which the nearest one to it? From this way, I came two, one, two. But for I came from this way, one, two, three, four, so two. What about this one? One, you now understand one, one, here's two. And if I go here, which was nearest one for it, if I come from this way, one, two. If I come from this way, one, two, so any one, two. What about this one, which is near to it? One. If I, I want to now this one, it should be one, two, or from this side, one, two, same. So I could add two. What about this one? One. From this one, two, two. What about this one? Three. If I want to make make sure this still, I say, okay, one, two, three. If I came from this way, one, two, three, same thing, three. If I need this one, one, two, three, four. If I want to check this one, which was the next one, it is this one, one. This one, one. This one, two. This one, three. So what about the cell? The cell, if I came from this way, should be two. If I come from this way, should be one. So I would take one. What about the cell? If I came from this way, one. If I, I came from this way, two. If I came from this one, two. So I would say one. This one, the nearest one, two. So uh, continuing. So which nearest one to this one, one. Which nearest one to this one, two. So did you see how I followed? So the question was, do implementation for this work if you have a void method receive only the coordinates that means cd will be will have coordinate for post office for example cd for uh, zero cd for zero have the first location for the post office which is this one how many which, which, what mean how, what is this one zero one two three so this one row number three which let me just show you row number three and column number zero one okay so it have for example uh, to coordinate so it should be three one because if you think about coordinate think about it is just this one a class coordinate is just class this one is just class so if you think about coordinate as a class okay it is just have uh, integer i integer what integer or i and integer j just the location so just to give you another example to make you understand, what about this one? So this one, if I just try to use different color, just make it easy. This one, which row? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this one, row number five, which column? Zero, one, two, three. Is that right? Yes, five, three. So second, second location in this coordinate should be five, three. Should I say, hey, CD41, just the input data for it equal five and three so now i want you to think about how to solve this problem just pause this video for a few seconds and try to think how you could solve this problem okay now i assume you uh, pause the video and you want to see the solution so i'll try to think about how you could solve this problem if i take only one of the post office and i added on the uh, birth death search, search and try to do queuing he will start for anyway so make think about you are already all these cells like any cells have number you already initialized by minus one so think about just initial value so when you fold it you will not refold again so think about just initially every cell have minus one except the this cells have zeros because this is how we calculate it. Like think about any post office have zero. You, you add zero on the cell. Another, the, anyone doesn't have anything, you add minus one in it. Just initial value. Now let me think about uh, adding, take one of these post offices and add it in the bear, death, death fair search. So in death fair search, you will do a stack. Is it right? Yes. You will add, for example, movement. You say, okay, any element I could move for movement. So you should say, okay, let me check the right side. Could I move? It have minus one. Yes. So no, it's not visited yet. So yes, move. How many movement? One. Add value. Then continue both left, right, side, top, any other side. But does it make sense for you using only left side and continue? 
or on your eyesight and continue it doesn't make any sense for you so a better way is using to solve this problem using birth birth first search so the idea in this way say okay whenever you reach any cell you do birth first search so that's meaning any cell you take the fourth side for it and add them in the queue you just add them in the, your queue so you have a queue and you add them in the queue and continue searching any node you visited you you have a value on it so it's not minus one so you will not visit again now you do okay one so what about other the really really easy and straightforward instead of adding only one post office in the uh, different search first of all add all the, all the post offices like mean this one post office number one post office number two number three number four add all the post offices in your in your queue i mean in your queue add all the post offices when you add all the post offices in, in the uh, queue and you apply what the Birth first search, that's mean, hey, all of these will move same thing. Same time, this one will move foresight. With this one, foresight, and this one, foresight, and this one, continues to, this one have to be one. We, we added two for it, should be one. And this one, foresight, and everyone, foresight, and continue. So whenever any, any cells reach it, to have new value. So now when this one access to this cell, they say, hey, I visit you before I visit the cell before you because I am nearest one so I have value this one will not update it because it already have value and you still have value will not get updated so yes yeah, so they will continue continue then done so basically this problem will be solved by taking the data taking post offices add them in the queue and apply bare fair stage and that is so make sure from this problems when you see it and try to implement this code for yourself